je pense que c'est plus facile okay. pour la traduction. Ça vous évite de okay. travailler en double. Bonsoir tout le monde. Bonsoir, Bonsoir. Peter. Bon, hein? Bonsoir, M. McQueen. Merci d'être là. You know, we're all in the same space. Can somebody speak to the landlord about how cold it is here? Jeez. <laughs> so I've Mr. got Patricia, a heating you... pad on, on my feet. What about you? <laughs> I'm getting I need a one. complaint by Zoom. This is my first Zoom complaint. <laughs> Finally, Mr. Patterson, I think you, uh, we, we, we were looking for you. But it seemed that. Oh, it's in silence. Oh, there you are. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Hi, Clifford. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Peter? Nice to see you. Good. I'm looking forward to your presentation tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Looking forward to giving it. We didn't hear you, Mr. Patterson, because uh, your microphone was off. And you are there two times. I saw you two times. I don't know if uh, there's a problem with uh, your connection or. Okay. You... Um, I yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, we do. I'm going to kill the, uh, uh, because I couldn't get in one way, I tried on my phone. So if you can okay. hear me now, I, I'll, yeah. I'll leave it there. Yeah, we Thank do. You. Yeah, we do. Perfect. Well, we're just going to wait maybe a few, uh, one minute, even though if it's already uh, 6.35. Madame Bocard, uh, bonsoir. Vous allez bien? Oui, bonsoir. Euh, J'essaie de me connecter avec mon laptop de travail parce qu'il est plus performant que mon vieux Mac, alors ça sera okay. pas très long. Et j'ai envoyé okay. le courriel juste maintenant à vous. OK. Bon, ben écoutez, on va, on va vous faire une petite place. Alors, euh, finalement, oui. peut-être que comme c'était prévu en quatrième, euh, donc ce soir, peut-être okay. que Jean-François va récupérer, va essayer de récupérer pendant qu'on fait la présentation. Génial. Et puis... Je vais juste changer d'ordinateur. OK, ça va mieux. Je raccroche dans celui-ci. Parfait, on va euh, tranquillement, pas vite, juste s'ajuster. Euh... Oui, OK. Excusez-moi. Voilà. Euh... Excusez-nous. On a juste... Euh, je peux peut-être commencer quand même tranquillement. Merci beaucoup d'être là euh, encore ce soir. Merci euh, donc de participer à cette troisième soirée. Nous avons encore cinq présentations ce soir. Euh, C'est la suite donc de, de mardi et mercredi. Alors, nous sommes très heureux de vous accueillir. Mon nom est Nicolas Lavoie. Je suis urbaniste à la ville, à l'arrondissement de côte des neiges depuis un, un bon bout de temps et c'est moi qui s'occupe un peu du projet. Je vais peut-être vous présenter mes collègues Jean-François, puis Yolande va vous dire également un petit mot en anglais. Bonsoir, mon nom est Jean-François Donnet. Je suis chargé de communication à l'arrondissement et donc très content de, vous, de faire cette troisième soirée avec vous. J'espère que ça va être aussi agréable que l'une des dernières. Alors, à tout à l'heure. Good evening, everyone. My name is Yolande Moreau, so I'm here to sort of be um, Nicolas' English sidekick um, and to offer sort of not, we're not translating everything, just our, the our interventions, the city interventions, uh, to offer them in French and in English. Um, so this is our last of the three evenings um, of presentations, and there are five presentations tonight. 
Welcome. Merci beaucoup. Alors, c'est un processus euh, euh, en fait fort intéressant qui intéresse beaucoup de gens. On peut le voir à l'écran ce soir avec les présentations qui nous ont été faites. On voulait quand même, d'entrée de jeu, vous présenter faire un petit, un petit aperçu là, de comment ce, cette soirée s'inscrit dans le processus. Jean-François, tu peux peut-être mettre l'air à l'écran, puis Jean, euh, Yolande peut traduire. Alors, c'est un projet, je le disais tout à l'heure, qui implique, euh, en fait, il y a une décision qui a été prise en, en mars euh, 2020, euh, juste avant la pandémie, de, de confier, en fait, d'aller de, de, chercher l'appui de la Société d'habitation et de développement de Montréal pour développer un nouveau projet euh, sur le site de l'Empress qui euh, comprendrait trois volets. Un volet résidentiel, c'est un, un des mandats de la Société d'habitation et de développement de Montréal de développer du résidentiel un volet culturel et artistique et un volet commercial. Et euh, c'est surtout sur des, ces deux derniers volets que nous avons sollicité euh, l'appui, en fait, des les idées des citoyens. C'est ce que nous avons fait à l'automne et on revient aujourd'hui avec les auditions des différentes, des meilleures idées, en fait, euh, que, qui ont été proposées par les gens. Yolande? So the process started last uh, spring, just before, in March 2020, just before... Uh... COVID um, and it's a process that started with the SHDM um, and the, what we're looking for in the Empress is a mix of ver various um, uses. There's a three components that a um, residential component, cultural and then a commercial component and the presentations and the proposals that we had asked the public and which we will have a taste of tonight were, are for the um, cultural and the commercial components. Mo, we should say mostly because I think mostly. that some of you, okay. uh, yeah, mo, 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 like also to consider some, some reden, residential uh, portion. Uh, je page suivante. Alors voilà, donc uh, en mars 2020, vous avez à gauche le mandat qui a été confié à la SHDM, le mandat d'Edifica, donc qui s'est déroulé de, à l'été et à l'automne, uh, qui a été pris la forme d'un atelier de co-création avec des, les principaux acteurs artistiques et, et communautaires de l'arrondissement et avec les présentations publiques en novembre et en décembre 2020. Et maintenant, on poursuit donc la deuxième série de, 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 de consultations qui sont plutôt tenues par l'arrondissement, donc la soirée de ce soir, les présentations publiques. Et vous avez aussi des étapes subséquentes. On voulait bien identifier que ce n'est pas la fin du processus mais qu'il y aura d'autres étapes. On vous reviendra probablement, on, on espère ce, ce, ce printemps, sinon début de l'été. Et il y aura aussi d'autres étapes dans le futur pour présenter l'état d'avancement du projet. Yolande? Est-ce qu'on a les, les, est qu l'a en anglais aussi ou non? Oui, on okay, peut la mettre en anglais. Well, my printout is too small. <laughs> Ça s'en vient, c'est très long. Je... I told you it's very friendly, so. Uh... Voilà. So this is um, the because there's a lot of details in English that you can you can read. Um, so as we stated in, we started in March, 2020, um, the first steps which are in the orange colors is what we have done up to now. So in July, we had given a mandate to Edifica. Um, there was co-creation workshops um, in September. And in November and December, um, people and uh, groups uh, sent in their, their um, ideas. And there was two public presentation sessions um, before Christmas. Now we're in February. So we're at the first blue bubble, which is uh, the public presentations, which have, this is the third night of, and it's ongoing. So this is not the last time that we will be uh, meeting with the community actors Um, coming back and forth um, with the community um, there um, in the spring or early summer there is going to be the next steps um, 
which I don't have, we don't have all the details, but there will be more consultations, more discussions, um, and the process will just keep on going um, until we have a more of a tangible project for the Empress. Merci. Merci, Yolande. Nous allons aller avec aux présentations dans quelques instants. Euh, petit point à, à signaler, comme ça a été le cas dans les soirées précédentes, nous, vous, nous allons vous inviter à la fin de chaque présentation euh, de, à, à répondre à un petit sondage, euh, en fait, pour essayer de d'essayer de, de noter de 1 à 5 l'appréciation que vous avez de chacun des projets qui sont présentés. Ça nous aide, nous, à, à essayer de départager un petit peu euh, les meilleures idées qui sont à contenu dans les différents projets. Yo, Yolande? Uh, after, after each uh, presentation, Nicolas and I have been working together for a long yeah, time. Sorry. So. <laughs> Um, there will be a really short, just one question survey that we'll ask people to uh, rate. It's just to get an idea of um, the feedback, uh, an immediate feedback on the presentations. Um, but, and be, but before we start the presentation, we just want just want to say that each presentation presenter will have 10 minutes, ideally, um, to present. And this will be followed by a 10 minute uh, question period. So people can ask their questions um, by raising their hands or by uh, signaling in the chat that they want to ask a question. Um, but during the presentation, we would really appreciate that everybody keeps uh, their microphones off and that they do not use the chat, please, because it pops up on the screen. It can be kind of distra distracting when you're um, presenting. Um, and I also want to mention that this is all recorded and will be available probably as of next week on uh, our website. And that's all I have it to add, Nicolas. Yeah, merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. So en are français? we ready to start? Miss non, Montgomery, en you... Uh, bon, enfin, oui, c'est ça. Peut-être uh, durant les présentations, peut-être éviter de mettre des messages dans le dans le chat, pour c'est un peu distrayant, donc attendez euh, à la toute fin que vous ayez, euh, que les présentations soient terminées. Euh, Madame Montgomery, je vous passe la parole peut-être pour dire un petit mot. Oui, alors bienvenue tout le monde, euh, je suis très contente de, voir, euh, de vous voir en grand nombre. Euh, il y a beaucoup d'enthousiasme et beaucoup d'intérêt dans ce projet, alors euh, je suis très contente. Et j'aimerais aussi euh, remercier euh, Nicolas et Yolande et Jean-François pour euh, vos travail. Et euh, ce soir, on va avoir cinq présentations et on a eu déjà euh, des idées très intéressantes mardi, mercredi. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what uh, you have in store for us this evening. Um, and I just find the creativity and the imagination of people in NDG Kotanej incredible. And um, I'm so happy that you're, you know, you're taking such an interest in the future of the Empress. Um, um, so that, and let's hope that we can go forward and finally, after many decades, uh, get a project in our, in our borough, finally. So, merci beaucoup et j'ai hâte de voir uh, les présentations. Merci, Nicolas. Thank you, Miss Mayor. So, we're ready to start, Mr. Uh, Schwartz. It's your turn. So, we're going to, yeah. on va présenter, mettre à l'écran votre présentation. Voilà. So, it, it's, your, it's your turn. So, go ahead when you, whenever you're ready. Okay, and I'll tell you when to uh, switch slides, I suppose, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Okay, perfect. Well, uh, hi, everybody. Nice to see everybody here. Uh, I'm just going to say, uh, je vais présenter uh, en anglais, mais uh, je suis prêt à prendre les questions en français uh, après s'il si, uh, y a besoin. Um, and I'd like to, uh, first of all, thank uh, Nicholas and, and Jean-François very much for this excellent process so far. Really, really well done. And of course, to Sue and Peter and, and all the officials who are actually making this happen after so long, uh, we're all grateful. Um, so, it's uh, it's obviously a very exciting project for everybody, and it's really great to also see so much participation by people, and it's it's really proof of the need for this project. So, 
this is really about moving the wheel club uh, into the Empress. So as far as the rest of the project goes uh, for the Empress, uh, I won't be speaking about that. There have been all kinds of great ideas and I've been very impressed. Uh, but this is really about utilizing that commercial space that so many have been talking about in terms of it being like a microbrasserie, a second uh, venue space, et cetera. Uh, so that's what, what we're really concerned about. Um, for those of you who don't know about the Wheel Club, the Wheel Club on Cavendish Boulevard is a historic venue uh, and a nonprofit as well. Um, it's, 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 also, it's got a bar and a full liquor license. It's a social club for so many. Uh, it's been around since 1987 under that name, but long before that as well when it was a veterans club once upon a time. And it still has a lot of the old uh, trappings of that uh, bygone era. Um, so about two years ago, it became available. The fellow who was running it, the president, uh, had decided it was time to call it quits. And uh, so I took it over together with uh, Kevin Patterson, who's here as well. And, uh, and we've since brought in a third principal uh, who's playing more of a minor role. Um, it was going really, really well. We took it from being in the red uh, at the start to, to being a well-functioning business, nonprofit as it may be. It was, uh, we were no longer losing money, which is really great. And it was going so well and then COVID hit and then bam, we had to shut the doors for a little while and uh, have been in peril because of it, like so many other small independent live music venues. Uh, but then we decided to take the plunge and get into live streaming from there. And uh, that has actually enabled us to keep the place open entirely through public donations. So we've actually never received any government funding whatsoever. Uh, it's all been publicly funded uh, individually. So people are in fact starved to continue to hear live music and we've, been, we've managed to keep it going. We've managed to keep artists employed and, uh, and keep this historic uh, little, little gem from, from shutting down. Okay, you can move to uh, slide two, please. So, We've got some obvious immediate benefits that we can offer to the Empress. So we have a very committed and loyal audience already. I mean, the place has been around for a long time. Uh, we're really considered to be already a cultural hub. Uh, and one could be argue, one could argue that it really is kind of the, maybe even the largest cultural hub in NDG if you exclude, I don't know, the Oscar Peterson or what have you. Uh, but there's, there's just constant activity going on over there. And it's been very much inter intergenerational uh, and very multicultural. Uh, we've catered to all audiences. So um, I don't know if anybody, uh, well, probably most people know about Hillbilly Night, uh, which is the longest running open mic in the city now in its 55th year. Um, mostly country music, obviously, uh, pre-1965 at that. Anyway, it is something to behold. It's it's not, and like it's unlike anything you'll see in the city, uh, and it's really like three and even sometimes four generations of people partying together, and even that, I mean, it, you'd be hard pressed to find anything like that going on in the city. So very intergenerational, uh, very multicultural. So since we took it over, we wanted to shed the image of it being a country and Western uh, spot. And we've featured music of all kinds uh, because in our opinion, there's only two kinds of music, good and bad. And we, we choose a good kind, uh, no matter what the style. So um, uh, with the live streaming, um, we've actually been able to reach a much larger audience, need, need, needless to say. Uh, at this point in the month of January, we've had a total reach according to Facebook of about 120,000. And um, so mainly Montrealers, of course, but, you know, it's live streaming, so it's global. Uh, a lot of uh, expats and so forth and, and people who just discover it and love what we're doing. Um, we, we have a business-minded management team. So although we're a nonprofit, uh, like I said, we've never gotten any uh, government funding whatsoever. Um, we've been, uh, it's been very self-sustaining as a matter of fact. So we treat it like a business and it's been working as a business, keeping artists employed. Uh, for myself, I'm a musical entrepreneur. I used to play for Cirque du Soleil once upon a time. 
when I came back to Montreal, it was all about uh, finding ways to keep me and my fellow artists busy. So I've helped a number of live venues to do well with music, uh, as well as uh, so many artists busy through uh, private events and whatnot. Uh, and it's all worked out very, very well. So when the Wheel Club came around, it just seemed like a natural fit. And I happen to live right around the corner. Uh, so, um, and then Kevin, uh, well, he's been an operation manager uh, for large corporations and currently manages about 60 people. Uh, and, um, and so he's, you know, obviously very business minded as well. And it's a nice combination because, you know, between my arts and business and his business and arts, we work very, very well together. Um, we have a third guy, as I mentioned, uh, Ed Edmund Laflamme, who's uh, really a technical genius. Uh, in fact, in his spare time, he, he builds robots in his basement. <laughs> um, but uh, so anyway, the three of us make a very good team and, and we've made a, a good go of the place. Um, the, uh, so as, as mentioned, the live streaming, it, it, we really kind of turned the place into a TV studio for all intents and purposes, where we've got uh, four, four high quality uh, cameras and sound off the board and great lighting and all that kind of thing. Uh, all the bells and whistles and uh, we're up to about 90 webcasts since late summer uh, we do roughly four or five of them a week um, as for it being a nonprofit, as i mentioned we we've been running it as a business not really as a place that it's it's not certainly not a charity and uh, no government funding um, and we believe that there's there's great synergy to be had with the empress uh, as we are already a cultural hub and artistic hub and the empress intends to be uh, we believe we have a lot to offer in that regard and we can grow it all together um, there's also been a lot of synergy with local arts organizations and i'll name specifically uh, notre dame des arts who uh, when they were unable to run their uh, ndg arts week because of covid they came to the wheel club and we together live streamed uh, all of the webcasts that uh, that came out of there or most of them in any case. Uh, and we've been working very, very well with them. All right, you can move to the next slide, please. So as mentioned, it's a nonprofit, uh, an events-based creative space uh, with over 37 years of experience in promoting live artists uh, um, and a cultural hub. Uh, I will add to that. Uh, so, okay, Hillbilly Night now in its 55th year, is uh, you've got to come and see it. It's actually all online on our Facebook page. Uh, so if you haven't seen it, you can actually watch it online every Monday live. Um, and, uh, you know, again, where, where could you possibly find three and even four generations all partying together? I mean, that's, to me, that, that would be a part of the vision for the Empress in terms of bringing the community together. Uh, in fact, even uh, even Sue, the mayor uh, herself, and uh, and Peter and Christian have, have come around and, and been a part of everything that's been going on in the Wheel Club. Um, all right, you can move on to the next slide. So our mission is to promote community accessibility to and involvement in artistic performance and to ensure all genres of music and performance art are available to all ages within our community, with our cult, within our culturally diverse and demographically rich community of NDG and, and of course, Greater Montreal. It does attract lots of people from, from elsewhere uh, and, and out of towners as well. In fact, it's the Wheel Club is so known and uh, that people when they do come in from out of town do, uh, do come around to the Wheel Club. Uh, so how, how have we fulfilled that, um, that mission so far? Uh, of course, maintaining Hillbilly Night and keeping that tradition going. Uh, we're big believers in history and um, preserving, preserving the history, uh, not just culturally, but of course the architecture and the building itself, that's, that would be dear to my heart personally. Um, we've had uh, kids jams. Um, so, uh, elementary and high school kids coming in and jamming under the guidance of myself and others, uh, which have been very, very successful and parents love that kind of thing. The kids love it. And uh, we've actually had uh, Dutch pancakes, which my wife was making uh, with the help of Kevin's wife and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
we've had, uh, you know, okay, so lots and lots of shows, of course, with big name professionals. Lately, it's been Juno Award winners and nominees and what have you. But we've had loads and loads of open mic nights and open jams so that we really uh, have made it accessible to people of any skill level, um, which is important as well. Uh, it's got to be enjoyed by everybody. Um, and also we've opened the place up to specific cultural groups. Uh, so we've had uh, people from uh, various nationalities and cultures come and run their events in the space as well, specifically for their, for their demographic. We've run songwriting workshops, which mix uh, prose again with beginners. Uh, we've run all kinds of fundraisers. Uh, we've raised money for NDG Food uh, Depot, uh, women's shelters, Sun Youth, Down Syndrome, and on and on and on. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, so with regards to live streaming, so we've proven to be re uh, resilient and uh, you know innovative with the live streaming in these difficult times. And it's worked out very, very well because we've managed to continue to keep the arts and the music going uh, through the live streaming. So the audiences are happy about that. The performers, obviously, as it is, they're coming out of the woodwork. Everybody wants to come and play at the Wheel Club because there's simply very little else to play. <laughs> there, there, there's nowhere else to play for them right now. So they're very happy about it. And they're also remunerated comfortably. Uh, so through, through the live streams and the donations, uh, the, the donations are being split equally between the artists and the club and, uh, and everybody's happy. Um, and then of course the, uh, community and culture. Okay. Well, I think we can move on. Uh, yeah, we can move on. All right. All right, so we're letting the cat out of the bag here a little bit. <laughs> Our um, most recent endeavor, uh, since we equipped the place with all the cameras and uh, have developed a nice team on how to use them, we've decided to embark on a new project that we're calling TV NDG. And that is specifically to get out into the community to start inter interviewing store owners and restaurant owners and artists and community workers and politicians. Uh, don't worry, Sue and, and Peter, we're coming for you. <laughs> um, and um, to the idea being that uh, every week there'll be a one hour uh, webcast, uh, podcast more like, so most of it pre-recorded, although some of it may end up being live. Uh, that we will then release to the public, uh, mostly on Facebook, but uh, YouTube as well and, and whatnot, uh, through the, uh, the, face, the, the big NDG Facebook sites like NDG Living, uh, Thrive NDG, et cetera. So the idea is that we really want to showcase all that NDG has to offer in terms of its incredible population. And we want everybody to know in, in the community to know about these people. Uh, especially now, because of course with COVID, it's been really difficult for the store owners and the restaurant owners. So this is something that we uh, will soon be uh, releasing the pilot episode of. Uh, not exactly sure when, it may be in a couple of weeks. In any case, it's imminent and, um, and it's really exciting and so far very, very well received. So the idea here is that we would want to bring this to the Empress as well. Uh, so the live streaming, of course, all these uh, these podcasts um, would that would feature, call it four to five interviews per uh, per episode per week, uh, would segue into the Wheel Club uh, live streaming concerts and whatnot. Uh, but the idea here is that uh, were we to reside at the Empress in that in that spot, uh, this could actually be shown in the window. Uh, so that people at street level, as they walk by, could actually see uh, TV NDG happening as it happens. So, and it can happen all day long. It can happen, uh, you know, morning till night, uh, because Lord knows there are lots and lots of people who would like to be able to speak, uh, who have something to say, and it doesn't just have to be, uh, you know, professionals and service providers and what have you. Uh, it can be anybody. And, uh, and I think that, that we, we, we strongly believe that that will be a, a very attractive element. Um, as people walk by, people just naturally want to be involved. 
whether they speak themselves um, or you know are, are part of a webcast or they're actually inside the place enjoying a coffee, a beer, a meal, and watching this take place. Um, I don't know if anybody has seen it, but uh, on the corner of Saint Laurent and Saint Catherine, you have a, a radio station CIBL, uh, and they do that. They're they're out there in the window, and anybody who's walked by is like, "Wow, hey, what's what's going on over there?" So we can do that. We can bring that. Um, we're already doing it uh, with the Wheel Club, with the webcasts, and of course with TV and DG. Uh, that's going to be coming up. Uh, we've got all the gear and, and whatnot, and we would like to uh, to bring that to the Empress. Um, just to let you just to let you know that you are at sixteen minutes, uh, Mister. Uh, oh, okay. I think I'm almost done here. All right, you can go on to move uh, slide seven. That's more of the same. Slide number eight. I'll hand over to Kevin. Um, Kevin Patterson. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, I hope you all can hear me there, and thank you for the opportunity. Um, really. Just a, to a quick thing on saying creating a cultural hub, you know, the, the aim here is to bring something that will be a cluster of artists that will contribute to each other, that will grow and learn uh, from each other and, 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 and make the space self-sustaining and promoting the arts and promote, promoting our local community, you know. When we say accessibility for artists, um, uh, we, we are not for profit, but we are for we want artists to be able to make a fair, uh, fair salary, wage, living, pay, whatever, out of their art. You know, it's not for free. It is art that's taken a lot of time to create, and we want to make sure it's valued. Uh, the performances, whether punk pageantry, opera, throat singing, uh, reggae, jazz, uh, you know, blues, hip hop, I, the whole thing. All, on all the types of arts we haven't heard yet and, and look forward to discover. It's fantastic what crosses our stage in the wheel club, but, can, you know, but really to have all that cross the stage in the Empress would be phenomenal. Um, the accessibility to the community, you know, we've all set our clocks slightly differently in COVID times, but we'd like to set away from season four, episode three on Netflix to what's going on the matinee? What's going on the lunchtime? What's going on the evening? You know, what's going on that I can count on that's local so that I have a reference to my community because we have one of the strongest community identities in Montreal and for in many, many places. So this idea of, of looking to our, having accessibility and being a hub and a reference is extremely uh, important and the Empress gives us a very frontline chance of that. The other thing is live streaming. You know, not only are we connecting all ages, we're connecting people together who are spread throughout the world. We have chats between people who are in Nova Scotia, Ireland and Australia who are enjoying the same experience around the wheel club and saying, I remember when I was there. And this, this, uh, this as a sense of pride is important, but also brings connectiveness. Also, you have those who are, do not have mobility uh, and, and therefore this gives them a way to connect with ourselves, with our family and with the arts in NDG. So, you know, whether, whether you are in Patricia, Girouard or my hometown in Ireland of Kildare, well, this is my hometown now, it, wherever you are, you can take part. And that's what we want to bring by the live stream. We do not want to wait till we're overtaken by Netflix. Sorry, back to you, uh, Cliff. All right. Um, so starting to wrap it up, um, just to say that uh, it would be probably be important to have a second venue for the smaller things um, within the larger venue. Uh, there are other places like the Rialto, for example, that have uh, a second smaller venue or even uh, the Telus Theater has a second one. And uh, so that, that it can really be, you know, constantly active and constantly visible in the way that we already do at the, uh, at the Wheel Club would be a very, very positive community hangout. Um, of course, we would offer food and beverage and uh, alcohol as we do. Uh, it in fact could become a microbrasserie as people have mentioned. Uh, weekends, we could still offer uh, Dutch pancakes, uh, uh, you know, in the mornings with the kids jams and what have you. Um, we, uh, anyway, all right, so yeah, you can move on to the next slide, please. Yeah, oh, I just covered that one. Sorry, you can go, uh, go to the last slide. 
Uh, and I'll just conclude before asking some questions. So we we do feel that we bring an awful lot to uh, to the table, including uh, community, of course, all the talent, uh, the expertise to go with it, um, and the the vision uh, on how to uh, to run a commercial space uh, like this. Uh, we've had the the perseverance and the dedication to make it all happen, even as a nonprofit. And uh, most of all, we bring in excitement, which is what's really, really necessary. And I think that a lot of times when it comes to government funded uh, cultural uh, organizations, they can be kind of dry at, at times and, and don't necessarily have the kind of excitement that we've managed to build in already at the Wheel Club, whether it's with people coming in person or, or be it online. And that's about it. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Schwartz and Dr. Sen. Uh, there's probably already, yeah, there's some question. Miss uh, Leslie? Your microphone is off. Yeah, there Okay, we go. hopefully that will work. Um, um, so thank you. I'm a long time uh, wheel club person, particularly the hillbilly night. Um, so I was immensely relieved when you guys managed to resurrect it when it looked like maybe it, it would it would be a goner. Um, and on a nostalgic note, the very last live concert I went to in the last year was with my absolute favorite musician, Dan Byrne. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have followed all over this continent. And so it was just such a treat to see him in my own neighborhood. <laughs> anyway, since then, I only only see him on, on, my, on my computer. <laughs> um, my question for you is, um, having listened to uh, Notre Dame des Arts and uh, the uh, NDG Art Hive PALS presentations last night, um, a lot of what you're saying would be complement complementary to what they were proposing. And my, my question really was, would you be open to participating within the structure of a community nonprofit um, that was managing the place, even if it wasn't, you know, the wheel club that was the lead in it. Absolutely. Um, and in fact, it was one of the things I wanted to mention was that we would be very amenable to the idea of participating in the management of the project uh, as a whole. Um, so of course, the wheel club is what uh, what is near and dear to our hearts, and we would like to be able to escape that dungeon of a building. <laughs> Um, which, I mean, it has its charms and all that. And we would, we would maintain a lot of it. We'd carry a lot of it with us just so that we can carry, carry through the history. But um, so, so our main focus would be that space. But if we were invited to, we would love to be uh, participants in the project uh, on the whole. Absolutely. Mm, okay. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you for your question. Mr. McQueen. Yeah, uh, thank you for the presentation, Clifford. Thanks for the good question, Sharon. That was a good, a very good question. Um, I really am interested in you guys participating in the project because I think you bring experience and initiative. It, it's clearly proven in terms of the live music and webcasting it. It's remarkable what you've done, and I've been, you know, been greatly enjoying your webcasts at home. And uh, you guys have done it very professionally and with a business mind, and you know the to make sure that it, uh, it's not losing money. Appreciate My it. question to you is, are there any, I, I wanna ask about the change of venue from like Cavendish to you know, Old Archer. So I guess I wanna know like, what would happen to the space on Cavendish? You, you would be happy to just leave your lease there and are you able to leave your lease there? Um, you know, a lot of people say the Empress doesn't have much parking in front of it, which is true, but I would presume there's not much parking there at Cavendish or, do you guys have an arrangement with the parking lot across the street on Cavendish? So I have a question about that. Um, you know, how much of your audience do you think comes from NDG from outside NDG? So I think you see what I'm getting at, what, uh, what the change of venue would mean for, for you guys. Yeah, well, okay. So the answer is we do have a lease there. Um, I'm not sure when you aim to be ready with the Empress, uh, but we may be close to the end of the lease by then. Uh, so there may be a penalty to pay or something along those lines, all doable. Um, as far as parking goes, yeah, I mean, 
there's the parking lot at the back of the building um, that people are allowed to park in after 7 p.m. and on weekends, otherwise they're not allowed. Uh, but that I, I will say that has been one of the big benefits. So for people that come from Cote St. Luke, Hampstead, Westmount, West Island, uh, where have you, uh, yeah, they're, they're happy that they don't have to go downtown and look for parking. They're happy that they can park. Um, so that would be a little bit of a question, or at least uh, one, of the, one of the lower points about being an old orchard. Uh, maybe something can be done, I don't know, uh, underground parking, perhaps. <laughs> Uh, I know that that's probably, that'd, be, that'd be ambitious, yeah. Uh, but, you know, the fact is that most of the people that come to the Wheel Club are, are within walking distance, nonetheless. And, uh, you know, for those who, who will drive, I mean, they, they'll be able to park on the Maisonneuve and get a, you know, of course, cycling would be uh, highly encouraged. I've cycled to the Wheel Club many times. Uh, I'm proud of you. <laughs> okay, mix a, a mix of sports, mix of sports and culture. Yeah, Indeed. yeah, very good combination. Yeah, exactly right. Thank you for your question and answer, Mr. Schwab. Miss Montgomery. Yeah, thank you for that, uh, Cliff. It was a really uh, interesting uh, presentation. Of course, I've been following you online too. Every once in a while, I catch one of the concerts. Not quite the same. No, I get it. Thanks a lot. <laughs> But, um, you know, we do what we can. Yeah. Um, my question is, uh, of course, I think the area around where the Empress is is a little bit more residential than where you are on Cavendish, if I'm not mistaken. So I was just wondering how um, you see uh, interacting with the residents, you know, like getting along with them in terms of when you would close and managing people leaving and you know uh if there's any sort of drinking going on i you know uh or noise things like that it's a good question um, i don't know cliff if you want me to take some of that one. Oh, oh yeah sure go right ahead we, we, our, our residents are 14 feet away from us so there's no power okay. building from the entrance and and we're not primarily a bar we are a performance space and, the, and that's the key, the, that we're there as a performance space. So, or you, you know, and that's where we want to be making the, uh, the living out of food and microbrasserie. There are compliments and very strong compliments. Um, mm -hmm. And you, in our performance, it's, it's, it's something about getting the volume right. We don't want to be burning down the, the neighbours. Right. You know, many of our performances actually finish 10, 30, 11, uh, many of them. And most, uh, and, and although it depends on the age of the person, some people want the music turned up loud because they've got young ears. Some people want it turned up loud because they've got old ears, but, yeah. but it's not loud. So you walk away with no ears. So, right. so, so just from that, we, we are in a residential space. As I said, as you walk in the entrance, the, there are, is an apartment building 14, 16 feet away from us. And we work to make sure we, we are good neighbors as the wheel club has for many years. And I think uh, it is very important that we're a compliment. We don't want to be, uh, it, it, we don't want people falling out. We want people, mm. even, okay, if you're dancing out, okay, if you're boogieing out, but we don't want them falling out of the club. Right. Sorry Cliff, you may want to add something to that, but. Uh, Sure. Yeah. I mean, you said most of it, but um, I'll, I'll just add a little funny story was that uh, early on when we first took it over and we were looking to see what was going to work and what wasn't going to work, we did host a, a party. It was a record launch, which was uh, loaded with people in their early 20s, I would say. And uh, they were having a grand old time and they were spilling out into the alley. And at a certain point, uh, the police did show up. And uh, the first thing they said was, we had no idea this place was here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, a good sign. That was yeah. a good sign, yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we kind of learned our lesson there. And, and like, uh, like Kevin was saying, I mean, we don't want it to be like a, you know, rip roaring party zone. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what downtown is for. This is really about the arts. It's about enjoying great music, absolutely dancing. Um, the very large majority of our, uh, of our shows have ended before 11 o'clock and we like it that way. Yeah, I'm all for that. Uh, things starting at six and ending at 10 or 11. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we need more of that. 
I exactly hate these right. places that open at 11. Yeah, yeah. No kidding. No, gone are the days for and, me. That's for sure. And yeah. maybe the co maybe the COVID will change our opening hours also. So we'll start yeah, earlier. Hopefully. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you very much. Thank you very much okay, for your thanks. presentation, Mr. Schwartz. Thank uh, you. All. We have our little survey that will uh, that uh, uh, Maxime is going to show you. So you have to cast your vote from one to five. Alors, uh, de un à cinq, quelle est votre appréciation du projet? Merci de vous uh, de, de dire un petit mot là-dessus. Uh, Est-ce que ça fonctionne? Euh, je ne vois pas les réponses qui euh, apparaissent. Oui, ça fonctionne. Euh, ah, désolé, okay. je vais vous les montrer à, à vous. Oui, oui c'est beau, c'est parce que d'habitude, ça me le montre. Hein. Merci beaucoup. Alors, Mr. Bunders, you're, you're next. I'm sure you're ready. As ready as we can be. I, I, yeah. I want Go full screen, it uh, disconnects my script. Hold on a second. Uh, um, trying to get my script back. No view. There you go. Exit full screen. There we go. This technology. Yeah, it is indeed. Okay, Rana, are you there? I am here. Okay, first of all, guys, uh, I'd like to thank all the contributors over these uh, three nights of having um, put in their best visions and they're creative and they're wonderful. And uh, the Wheel Club is a real hard act to follow, I have to tell you. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, our, our vision is totally aligned uh, with yours uh, in terms of intergenerational. So. My name is Ellie Bonder. And I'm Rana Liu of the Intergen Virtual Studio, here to say that we believe in using co-housing and co-creation as a means to connect generations through shared authentic experiences. How do we connect the disconnected? At age 70, I wonder where all the young people have gone and connecting on the internet is a bit iffy. Is it natural to be surrounded only by seniors like me? Is there a place in the world where young people and elders actually enjoy things together? Well, at the Wheel Club, right? <laughs> um, for my generation, there are increased learning barriers where automation and digital are changing the nature of work. 84% of jobs require technology skills. And what about the soft skills of relationships? Is there a community space where learning, creating, and connecting makes us all better? Because not all of us can keep up. Alone in our silos, we feel the growing divide between generations. How can we start a dialogue? Right here at the Empress Redevelopment, let's empower youth and seniors by enabling them to engage with each other through storytelling, digital storytelling about each other a collaborative solution using mentorship that is key to reducing the generation gap. Let's design a living urban model of a village where it's just natural for generations to trip over each other. Our intergen virtual studio, all recruit youth and leaders and elders of all communities and encourage intercultural and collaboration online. But after COVID, we'll need a place to hug, laugh, and catch up. So, so many good ideas have emerged in this NDG consultation. And a creative, collaborative, accessible, fun space is just what we need. What if we create a cooperative to manage all these ideas and manage the building itself? How about designing residential units on top where a combination of social housing and accessible home ownership units encourages youth, families, and the elderly to set up camp to enjoy each other and support each other, but assure privacy 
and most definitely soundproofing because the wheel club's going to be on the bottom. <laughs> Natural common living spaces at the bottom, midway, and on the roof that encourages cohabitants to bond and the community to bond to. Allow people to tell each other's stories together between cultures, between generations, a collaborative space powered by storytelling in all its forms, where the social needs for dialogue, skill development, and especially safety and security are met. Our mentored intergen virtual studio web platform will one day launch as a cooperative, a co-created and co-owned web space. Our online co-op will be a powerhouse of creative amateur web entrepreneurs, creating mentored and collaborative, collaborative digital content that families will want to watch, meaning a financial return to the co-op and another way to measure the socioeconomic impact of this enterprise. Let's expand that initiative by bringing in all our MEG community groups and individuals into the co-op, a, a big alliance of partners, and build a world-class model of intergenerational cohabitation and recreation. Already, there are two groups in Montreal who are interested in joining us here in MEG to build out a co-housing concept. They are advanced in their planning and financing, and they are eager to integrate NDG habitants. Let's work with the SHDM. Hey, SHDM, are you listening? <laughs> and the GRT, that would be a group uh, resource technique that accompanies uh, groups like us. And one I point out to is group CDH to make this happen. Mentored by Maison de l'Innovation Sociale the Cooperative d'Habitation Le Trapez is building 37 residential units, common spaces, and a commercial space opening onto the Lachine Canal. Prévu pour 2023, le Cohabitat Trapez est accompagné par le groupe de ressources techniques, bâtir son quartier et par village urbain. Pour des conseils dans le recrutement des membres, l'aménagement de l'espace et l'organisation interne. Projects such as these follow from early co-housing initiatives in Denmark, France, and Quebec City. The Empress was a place of storytelling. Now we can build an ecosystem of artistic spaces all connected with the theme of storytelling. The Empress Theater was and is fundamentally a historical theater locally and nationally. It is our responsibility to celebrate this legendary space as an inclusive and diverse space as the heart of an intercultural and intergenerational meeting place in NDG. To sustain the community access portion of the development, the cooperative can maintain such commercial endeavors as a microbrewery and retail seller of toys, books, art, even subscription art, using new cashierless payment technology like no cashiers integrated <laughs> into the community access space. All the ideas brought forward by the NDG groups in this consultation have a place in what we are suggesting. Let's encourage literacy, media literacy, art literacy, and financial literacy here. Our prototype, the Intergen Video Project, was pioneered by curious teens, inspiring mentors, and elders living their loneliness. They got matched, they created, and produced together. They celebrated their story making. The impact was immediate. Now we have an opportunity to match co-housing groups with the NDG community to co-create an urban village that has the tools of collaborative artistic production and distribution in the, in the context of human dialogue and getting to know each other. Life should be about sharing each other's stories, relationships between generations and cultures is the focus of our intergen project. Let's create together, let's live together, let's be together. Uh, that completes our formal presentation, maybe just a few words about us. Uh, our team members are proudly NDGers working or rooted here. We're proud to have the West End Intergenerational Network as part of our team. They are an arm of the NDG Senior Citizens Council. So hi, Tracy. We, we saw you earlier. <laughs> um, 
Uh, we are also partnered with Explorations. I am an educator and the community development officer there. We're an educational charity on Summerled Avenue, who is also a member of the NDG Youth Council. Um, Exploration provides enriching learning experiences to everyone from ages zero to 99, literally from zero to 99. <laughs> and beyond. Yeah. I'm the president of Canada Charity Partners, a registered charity devoted to wellness of communities. And we're continuing to expand our partnerships with educational media and activist groups like the Université de Montréal Faculty of Medicine there, occupational therapy researchers in the intergenerational and geriatric space have proposed to help measure the social impact of our mission. And from Mentor Canada's research, it's found that youth participating in mentored programs were 50% more likely to continue their studies. And we believe we can increase that both virtually and at the Empress. Thanks again, and we look forward to hearing your questions. Thank you very much, uh, both of you. Yeah, I think uh, many of you may applaud. You know, I used to have a, a, a side life uh, some, some years ago when uh, I was a lecturer at the University of the Montreal. And if you were my students, I probably could give you a perfect note on that presentation because, uh, <laughs> yeah, you respect the time and everything. It's very interesting. I like that this, this uh, duo that you were making. Alors, il y a probablement des questions qui viennent de la part de la, des gens. Madame Montgomery, vous avez la main levée. Est-ce que c'est pour euh, de tout à l'heure ou c'est de maintenant? Sinon, euh, je suis... De, de, de tout à l'heure. Excuse-moi, c'est pour euh, l'ancienne euh, présentation. Voilà. De... Ah, oui, merci. OK. Mr. Strzok, you have a question. Uh, hi, so thank you to, uh, to both of you for this very good presentation. Um, one thing that I wanted to, uh, to raise here is that from the presentations that I've seen, noting that I wasn't able to join yesterday, I really appreciate that this presentation actually combines the, um, the residential component into kind of one coherent concept with the rest of the building. I think a lot of the presentations up until this point have really treated those items separately. Um, and to the extent that we can have a coherent vision that pulls the entire building together, um, I think that this is a benefit that we should explore. Thank you. Uh, you wanna say something, Mr. Bandu or Rana? Well, no? uh, it, first of all, the uh, thank you for the high marks. Uh, we we <laughs> practiced at the Co-op Raton this past fall. Yes, we've been. <laughs> yes. and we did emerge as finalists in this in this sector of generation understanding and also socioeconomic impact. Um, so we think that when the Empress came around, we had to put our ideas and vision into concrete practice. The idea is that we, whatever we create virtually, um, can have concrete feet can have uh, a foundation, as it were, um, at the Empress. And the Empress can have a worldwide vision to it. It could become a tourist attraction due to the viral possibilities of how we model this new building. Thank you. This is probably with the, the answer to one of the questions that I sent you before, because I, I just uh, read again my, my, my question. I think you were, were giving some, some uh, very interesting inputs. Uh, Monsieur McQueen, vous voulez poser une question? Yes, please. Um, thank you for the presentation, Mr. Bonder, uh, Mrs. View. Uh, very interesting presentation. I first have a question for you. I saw some of the people uh, you're involved with. I saw the letter of support from Miranda Potts and from the NDG Senior Citizen Council. So I see you're connected with that. My question to you is, do you have previous experience with the SHDM, who of course have a fair amount of experience with housing seniors? So have you ever cooperated with them on any other projects and, and so forth? I would have loved to, but nobody answers my uh, emails or telephone calls. Okay, so you're open to it. Uh, any other senior residents experience in, in uh, I don't know, in, in the West End or in, in one of the ad adjoining cities? Well, I am a senior. 
I am, I am, I am a musician. Okay. And in fact, I play for seniors groups at uh, different uh, senior residences. Uh, oh, great. I'm an aggregator of uh, folk songs. Great. In, Have you in, played at the New Hope uh, Senior Center? Or? Not yet. I'm waiting to do my Irish best. Okay. My other question is actually from Mr. Strzok. I mean, uh, I was, I was uh, you know, I noted your question. It was a good question or a good comment. You're right. People are not, uh, this is trying to integrate, you know, both the residents and the uh, cultural uh, use of the building. I'm just asking, wondering if you are here representing a certain organization or I, I don't think I've met you before. So I'm, I'm just wondering. Um, no, I, I'm not here representing any organization. I presented a, an idea on the on, on Tuesday and the, the first evening, um, one which uh, I I think you know sparked some some interesting discussion, not just about how we kind of concretize different solutions, but what it is that we're actually looking to achieve with this, and and how we can kind of fit together whatever it is that we decide we're going to do into a broader strategic vision to give it some legs and to give it sustainability and to really plug it into everything that's going on in the community. All right, well, thank you for that answer. Uh, Miss Leslie, before, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, just a, a, quick, a quick comment on exactly the, the housing portion. Um, there were several presentations last night, Brooke, that um, noted the housing as an integral part of it, um, stressed social housing over um, home ownership because of the really um, strong needs in the community for um, affordable rental housing of some description and that there could be a link. It could be an, a co-op co housing with priority given to artists, for instance. Um, uh, what was interesting in this presentation was it's the first time I've heard it mentioned a combination of um, affordable home ownership, meaning lower end condos and um, social housing. And there is a model in NDG for that at Benny Farm where Tango, which is a project for severely disabled, physically disabled adults, occupies the two first floors of a building and condos are on the other five floors. And so it's um, it was a viable model to um, uh, rentabilize. Uh, it, it helps generate and pay for, it generates revenue and helps pay for the costs. So my, my urging would be that as collaboration happens, hopefully with SHDM in developing the housing component, that maybe it might be possible to explore a combination of social housing and affordable home ownership um, because it's worked very well at places like Tango. Thank you for this uh, comment, Miss Leslie. Youssef, please uh, dire un petit mot. Oui, euh, bonsoir. Merci beaucoup pour uh, cette présentation. C'est vraiment très intéressant. J'avais juste une petite question. Est-ce que vous avez um, une idée sur uh, la structure? Vous, vous parlez d'une coopérative. Est-ce que cette coopérative va être uniquement, par exemple, on va être, avoir une coopérative pour le volet résidentiel, un autre pour euh, le volet commercial et un troisième pour le volet euh, culturel? Euh, vous avez mentionné le, le, le GRT CDH, mais euh, je pense que, que CDH, c'est uniquement pour résidentiel. C'est -ce pour cela que je demande, il y a trois volets. Comment on peut combiner les trois volets dans une seule coopérative ou plusieurs coopératives? In, in my vision, uh, a cooperative that we build together would incorporate all creators, um, all creators who are participating in the virtual studio. And that virtual studio is a tool for young people and seniors to be creative ever more. Um, let's build it out as a cooperative and uh, it will find sources of funding that could be conjoined with sources of funding for, the, for all the members of NDG who want to be part of that scene, who want to be modeled within the intergenerational space. So that co-op would in fact be, let's say uh, one leg in NDG and one leg in the world of 
creators and people who believe in the intergenerational possibilities. So the co-op could become, could acquire the building, the Empress. There are multiple financing routes to make that happen. Um, a, a GRT like CDH um, are more flexible these days and they're already at our table. All they wanna know is um, who are they, who can they work with? But what, what, what group, uh, who's out there? What's, what's it gonna become? So my obvious question is to the mayor, to the mayoress, is would the community and to council, would the community empower the creation, the founding of a co-op to make this happen with full access to SHDM ideas and planning together and uh, working out the, the physics of doing this. Now, I'm not, I don't have experience as a developer, but uh, we have one group that's interested in joining us, which is uh, Village Ardin. And they do have that experience. There is another group that is actually uh, searching for space in Hochelaga Maisonneuve. They are called Espace Co. And if their space doesn't work out, they would love to join us here in NDG. They've already raised funding for the luxuries, which SHDM typically does not provide, which is soundproofing. Um, so they've raised money on their own to make sure that that little looks, that little extra that would make for good neighborly relations is there. So I think that's a very human sentiment that they are part of. And uh, in my discussions and my research, it's, uh, it's all about finding out what's, what's real and what's possible. So I do believe that um, it would be incumbent on the, let's say the community council of NDG, the city council here in NDG, the mayor, the mayor of Montreal to give a hand up to the creation of this co-op which would find the ways and means of managing, uh, designing. It would be a lot of co-design involved, just as we've been doing the last couple of months. Um, and that, for me, is the route forward. Yeah, I think it's you raise you're raising very good questions. And but the uh, we are at the stage of you know defining what the project is. Maybe the, it's the kind of question that we are going to. Maybe to try to answer a little bit later this uh, this uh, this year, but it's very uh, interesting uh, to have your comments also and your thinking. You, I mentioned before that we are meeting with the Village Urbain in a couple of uh, of weeks uh, uh, to uh, have a, a little chat with them. Uh, Mr. Patterson, a little quick comment probably from you. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll make it very quick. A very good presentation. Um, the idea of people of all ages being artists. And the idea of creating a cultural cluster around, uh, and I, I, I like that idea because it works in many areas where people feed in and become more than the whole. The idea of uh, our space for residents being artists in residence as such is very interesting. And just to say thank you, very good presentation. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Alors, on va faire notre petit sondage, our little survey again. Maxime is going to show it on the, on the screen. Please cast your vote. Merci de voter en grand nombre. Merci. Quinze personnes. Voilà, ça rentre tranquillement. On va laisser cinq secondes. Pendant ce temps-là, monsieur... Euh, Monsieur Orozco, vous vous préparez? Excellent. Merci beaucoup à tout le monde. Thank you very much for everybody. So, yeah, the, the, la parole est à vous. Uh, Jean-François va projeter. Voilà. OK. Go ahead. Whenever you're ready. Hello. Uh, my name is uh, Pedro Orozco. I uh, was born and uh, raised in Mexico City, uh, where I studied industrial design. Uh, I was interested in architecture and design from a young age, even before finishing high school. 
I started working for an architectural firm. And I'm also an uh, amateur musician. I moved to Montreal in 2010 with my family, my wife, who's an artist, and our two children who played music at school. And since we arrived to Canada, we have been living in MBG. I don't know if you can show the, the next uh, slide. Thank you. Um, so we are living here in MBG. And uh, recently in a collaboration with Maria Escura, we did a public art project from, for the facade of the Maison de la Culture de MBG at uh, Botrel Street that you can see on the, on the slide. But it's better appreciated if you stand in front of it, so I invited you to go. It's inspired in uh, migratory birds and resembles Mexican papel picado, giving visibility to the cultural and, and natural diversity of the neighborhood. Uh, next slide, please. I really like and I feel proud to be part of MDG, multicultural and diverse community. For me, that is one of the greatest advantages of this uh, neighborhood. It says many different things about us, uh, or different origins, uh, the fact that we speak different languages, uh, have different interests and needs. We can experience this uh, every time we go out for dinner or we are doing our groceries or talking with our neighbors, taking our children to cultural or sport uh, after school activities or just mingling with the schoolmates uh, families. So we testify this diversity every day, but in the end, we are all from NDG. And I'm, I'm always wondering what is that that put all of us together? And I don't have an answer, but maybe this discussion and hopefully the materialization and daily experience of the project can help us to answer this question. But surely I always had and always will try to take this notion of uh, diversity into account when reflecting about this new project for NDG. Next slide, please. I want to say that I'm very happy to participate in this democratic exercise and contributing my ideas and having the opportunity of hearing from others for the creation of this space for our community. There are very interesting ideas, and I appreciate the fact that our suggestions, needs, and desires are considered. I hope that they will help to reflect and think about us as a community to make this project possible and keep it alive once materialized. Well, I would like to explain the four main ideas uh, that I would like to see included in the, in the project. Next slide, please. When you think about promoting community activities, the, this unique, uh, unique location of the building in front of uh, the park is something very important to consider. The park is already a point of attraction for outdoor activities and cultural events. The project should keep promoting these community events such as movie screenings, opera, music, dance, art, uh, uh, workshops, etc. I think that it's important to link it also visually with the building. Maybe that's what I'm suggesting a, a green facade or through some blank art as shown in the, in, in, the, in the slide. But maybe could be by other means, not necessarily what I, I, I express in there. It will be interesting to create an underpass under Sherbrooke Street, linking the building with the park physically considering at the same time the safety of the pedestrians. It could also be done the other way around, having the cars going below the street and, and uh, the below street level and uh, leave the, the, a direct connection with the, with the park for the pedestrians. Anyway, these ambition ideas can become future projects, allowing us to focus for now on the building. So focus on the building I think it's important that the project includes spaces to display art or video projections that can be seen from the outside. Some interior spaces could also be used as open space art galleries, giving priority to NDG artists or encouraging other artists to engage with the community in some way. Next slide, please. I see the project as 
mainly as a, as a performance art center. So in that uh, sense, I was reflecting that the NDG has already venues like the, 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 the central, the hall at the Benny Library or Central Cultural NDG or the Oscar Peterson's concert hall with a capacity that already is 200 and 500, something like that. For me, having more or many smaller theaters than another large one open up the possibility to offer more events. This will help to have a more diverse offer, opening spaces for small productions of creators who are starting out experimental artists or projects for a specific communities, for example. I also imagine that there could be screenings of retrospective films from the National Film Board collection or international film screenings. They can also be rented for private events, obtaining through these rentals funds to maintain the less commercial projects. This will provide a diverse cultural offer for this diverse community. Cafeterias or bistros can be located on some or all floors. These open up spaces for the community to socialize, which can increase the clientele of other similar service, services in the surrounding area. Next uh, slide, please. Thinking about commercial projects linked to the social community and cultural vocation of the building, that could make the operation of the center self-sufficient. I see that it's an opportunity to have rehearsal rooms for music, dance, and theater. In my experience, there are no rehearsal spaces in NDG, at least for music. Currently, in order to rehearse, one must travel to another part of the city or to do it at home, sometimes interfering with our family or neighbors' routines. It is difficult for people to play music, for example, or rehearse for the famous NDG Perfest. I imagine that it must be even more difficult for theater performers or dance groups that need more space. That's why the proposal reserves a big section of the building's basement to have individual booths and acoustically insulated rehearsal rooms. This can be rented by the hour for individual and group rehearsals. They can also be used for workshops and even private lessons. These rooms could also have storage space for the equipment and tools needed for different activities. One of these rooms could be placed next to a recording studio, allowing different groups to use it to record their performances. Also, small recording studios could be used on an individual basis, mostly for music, but also for podcast or, by the, or video production. Next slide, please. When we moved to Canada from Mexico, we were concerned about how to deal with the cold and the lack of light, as you can imagine. A Canadian friend told us not to fight the winter, but to embrace it. So we did it. Our kids started playing hockey and other winter sports, had different outdoor activities, and we tried to get out as much as possible. One of those outings was a visit to the Montreal Botanical Gardens, right after the first big snowfall we experienced here. I remember how good we felt going into the greenhouse and feeling that natural warmth in the air and seeing green everywhere. That experience is what I wish could be replicated on the roof of the, uh, of the building. Also, a conversion to a more environmental friendly culture is a must today and we cannot let pass this opportunity to have green spaces. That's why the proposal includes a suggestion to create a green roof with a glass canopy on top of the building, a winter oasis, if you will, like. All or a section of this space could be open to the public, public and be used for outdoor presentations, outdoor, <laughs> all year round, allowing us to be kind of outside without the jacket, scarf, hat, gloves in the middle of the winter. It could have a very positive psychological effect for the visitors. For example, people with a restricted mobility. To be able to experience a green space and feel the sun warm in the middle of the winter. As a plus, following the intention of having cultural activities in the park, 
it occurs to me that these winter oases could include a stage for concerts and presentations, mimicking what happens at town's kiosk. Well, I hope that uh, I have been able to express my ideas clearly and uh, they will serve as a starting points for further discussions. Even if not all these ideas end up being feasible, I hope that together we can think of the best alternatives. I have enjoyed hearing all the ideas presented and I cannot wait to see this project become and stay real. Thank you very much for listening. Yes, and thank you very much for your presentation. Very interesting. I hope uh, you're getting along with the winter after 10 years. Kind of, kind of. <laughs> been born here 50 years and you know sometimes it's very hard especially in these cold <laughs> nights of uh, february yeah 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 uh, yes miss uh, leslie you have uh, a question yeah, for th you thank you the first thing i wanted to say was um thank you so much for what you've done at uh, la maison lecture so Botrel. I, I saw it over the holidays. I was walking there. I have a friend who lives right beside it and it was just, just beautiful. I took pictures. I came back another day when the light was different um, and I had no clue, you know, how that had got there, but, um, but I, I love it. <laughs> and I suspect a lot of people haven't discovered it yet because it's kind of out of the way. Anyways, the other idea I wanted to ask you about um, was I really liked a lot of the different creative ideas about the park and particularly facilitating the access between the Empress, like getting from the building to the park, which I could just see being a recipe for disaster of people, you know, just crossing the street with the traffic coming. I mean, that's what would happen. Um, anyway, so the under over thing, but I wanted to ask if, um, you'd also considered um, having a pedestrian walkway over uh, into the park because I know in Calgary that's one place I remember it's not for a park but it's between uh, it's crossing a street between office buildings and so people don't have to go outside they just walk across this um, bridge um, that's high up in the street, uh, whatever floor it's on, I don't know. Um, anyway, it just struck me that might be a, an interesting solution to the really, really crucial safety issues um, that having more activity in both of those two places would provoke. And did, do you know any places where they've done that? Like, do you have models that you drew on? Um, um I, I i have uh seen this in uh in some places in mexico city okay uh -huh. precisely uh buildings that were uh, adapted to different uses and these uh, crossings could alter the the, the 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 traffic or would endanger the, the the pedestrians that even if you put an overpass uh mm -hmm. sometimes people are don't want to use it or are distracted yeah or, yeah yeah or, or, or add up more more uh, problems uh, for, for, right. for people on wheelchairs or or, or strollers, yeah. etc. Yeah. So that's yeah. what I, I I thought that maybe going uh, uh, softly underneath Sherbrooke could be yeah. one solution. Yeah. The other well, one... I mean, we have we have the Melrose Tunnel that goes under the train tracks <laughs> and is still used to this day. I mean, maybe we can create an Empress Tunnel. <laughs> I don't know, but but it's pointing out uh, the 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 potential problem that 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 could be, and giving a, a, a possible yeah. solution. That's that's Absolutely. that's my, my, my idea. Not that this is the best. Yeah, idea, yeah. no, I think, think it's a wonderful, and I haven't heard that being expressed so far in this process. So, thank you. There's another. Yeah. Uh, I, I see another uh, proposal like decorating the the, the 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 sidewalk and the street and, and I, that give me the idea that they want also to have that space for pedestrians so i, I think the, the idea is is, is uh, around there thank you very much yeah i think the uh, the, the 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 crossing or the the, the how can i say the the the, the sherbrooke Jean street Francais. is going to be okay. why why enfin je sais même pas comment on dit en français alors uh, le, Le réménagement ou en fait le passage entre le parc et le, et le théâtre Empress va être un enjeu important on, on, auquel on pense déjà. Là. 
Mm. But I don't want this to be a, a, an issue to stop everything because uh, yeah. it, it looks yeah. like the problem is just getting bigger. So mm. that's what yeah. I, I, I maybe is just to point that uh, potential problem and possible solutions to be considered in, in later stages and try now, now to focus on the on, on, on the theater that yeah. it <laughs> has its own. Yeah, I, I also send you a little information, a little question because I had one just in case. Uh, but I think it's it's a good you, you about it was about the the picture that you shown that it was the, the second di, uh, slide showing you in front of the Maison de Dame de Grasse. Uh, Miss Leslie just pointed that that out. So I, you have you have how do you see the the the, the also the 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 future? Uh, quel est le futur en fait de la Maison Botrel vers par rapport à l'impress? How do you how we do how we should we share the the, the future of the these two buildings, because this is one of the questions that we are raising. Alors, est-ce qu'on, est-ce qu'on les deux sont complémentaires? Et si oui, comment on, on travaille avec l'un et l'autre? I, I think uh, that they are complementary, and uh, even that they are so close that uh, they can uh, join forces, not not to compete. I I I don't see that that happening. The Botrel building already has uh, two good galleries, art galleries for uh, our, um, uh, art, uh, visual arts. And what it's lacking is more the, 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 the performance art space. So I think that the, 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 the new building could bring that, that extra for, 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 the, for, for the, the sound, for, for the offer, for the cultural offer. So I don't see them competing. I see them more like integrating and it's just like like you almost just have to cross the, the, the park and pay a nice walk to, to go from one to the other. So uh, I really think that they can work together. Yeah, it's very, it's very close uh, when, uh, when you have to walk. Uh, ma Madame Luyou, vous aviez une question, je pense. Oh, oui, salut. Um, I just want to say I loved your idea. I think it was wonderful that you're integrating the outdoors with the indoors um, as someone who really suffers from winters. Um, I think that's great. One thing that I really wanted to highlight was I saw the mural that you had kind of edited into the Empress Theater. Um, and as someone who is a huge fan of street art and who studies it and also teaches it to children, um, I know there is a lot of interest um, in our youth to be able to create murals. Um, would that be something that you would be open to maybe like, similar to the, um, you know, Festival de Mural sur Saint Laurent. And in that area, could we bring that festival over to NDG so that we could share, you know, public art with people and also have the youth, um, you know, be a part of it? Uh, I'm glad that you like the, the ideas. Uh, respecting of the murals, I am, I, I'm not the one to, to decide, <laughs> but <laughs> I will suggest, uh, or, or I think it's part of the, of the proposal, to make instead of having uh, a mural, is to 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 take advantage of the of the facade to to project, maybe rethink the 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 the, the, the mural as a more uh, video projection. But you can project maybe your own creations or maybe just a, a, a very nice uh, photo of our of your. Uh, art of your drawing, your painting, your sculpture, or maybe it's just more uh, more um, interactive uh, things. Like it, I'm, I'm sure you you have seen Montreal is known for for that uh, kind of expression, the, the champagne bridge or, or what uh, Moment Factory does. That it's it's not only the visual art; it's just it's also that it's connected somehow via internet. It's interactive. I don't know if you. Hear about that the Champlain uh, lights these days are are, are um, dying because it's connected for to to the number of posts that the people does in the, in the in the Twitter account I guess or some 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 place in the internet. If you mention the Champlain bridge lighting, it goes up. If it not, it goes down. So because uh, people is not outside this this during the curfew that uh, provoke the, the, the Champlain Bridge. But it's that kind of interactions that maybe you can, uh, or, or the community can, can uh, uh, project in the, in, the, in, in the building. 
But anyway, even if it's a, 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 a concrete piece or, or something, it will be nice also to have like a, like a show, of like, like a glass show space. So you can see uh, from the outside what it's inside. So somehow 24 hours, you can see what it's happening. And it's more public that just close on it into a new thing. So I, I, I will say that that's my idea of, of a mural. <laughs> no, it's wonderful. I love it. <laughs> thank Rafael, you. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Thank you, Mayor. The mayor has to, uh, has to uh, leave us. So uh, thank you very much for being here for at least for an hour. Uh, merci, à merci à tout le monde. Merci. Au revoir. Merci. Bye bye. Um, on va aller avec notre petit sondage, euh, si vous permettez, avant de passer à Mme euh, Madame Bocard. Vous pouvez commencer à vous préparer. Euh... Excusez-moi, c'était bien la présentation. Euh, le borne risque d'architecture? Excusez-moi. Euh, non, on va, non, on va faire euh, Madame Bocard avant, puis je vais vous garder euh, Madame, euh, Madame Risque à la toute fin, si vous permettez. Non, pour le vote, excuse-moi, non, c'était Ex-Empress, c'est ça. Oui. Oui, exactement, excusez-moi, oui, excusez-moi. Je n'avais même pas saisi que c'était toi, Maxime, qui posait la question, excuse-moi, là. On est presque là. Peut-être encore une ou deux personnes qui ont besoin de faire le vote. Voilà, je pense que c'est bon. Merci infiniment encore, euh, M. Orozco. Et là, on passe à la prochaine présentation. Euh, euh, Madame Bocard, je ne sais même pas si je prononce votre nom de la bonne manière. Si je ne si je le fais pas, je suis vraiment désolé. Non, aucun souci. La parole est à vous. Parfait. Alors, bon. Euh, bon. De raviver des impresses, raviver des impresses. Je vais faire la présentation en français et en anglais parce que je suis quand même bilingue et je ne suis pas si pire que ça. Euh, vous pouvez procéder à la prochaine slide. Je, pas je crois que votre micro ben, est ben, trop ben, loin. Est-ce ouais, que vous m'entendez mieux? Oui, oui, voilà. Ouais. <rire> Désolée. C'est les ennuis de télétravail. Alors. Oui, il y, y a des vieux comme moi là, qui ont de la misère à entendre à cette heure-ci. Non, c'est à journée longue, c'est pas grave. Alors, euh, comme vous pouvez euh, constater, j'aime bien commencer avec euh, une citation et terminer avec une citation. Alors, pour commencer, « Preservation is simply having the good sense to hold on to things that are well designed, that links us to our past in a meaningful way, and that pave plenty of good use to them. » Alors, euh, donner un avantage ou une importance de préserver le passé à aujourd'hui. Ça serait fort pertinent et d'impresser comme une idée de projet que j'aimerais qu'on qu continue à développer comme vous le faites déjà. Next slide. Alors, les sujets que j'aimerais aborder, inquiétez-vous pas, je vais essayer de le faire en moins de 10 minutes. Si vous voulez, je vais juste me chronométrer comme ça. Je vais pas dépasser mon temps. Alors, euh, voici le survol. This is a brief uh, overview of the subjects I would like to talk about. Introduction, definition, history, the project that I would like to present, and the advantages and the constraints that it can be considered, and the conclusion. Next slide. Alors, who am I? Qui je suis? Alors, euh, mon nom c'est Laura Bocard. Je ne suis pas une artiste de quelque sorte. Je ne suis pas spécialisée dans les arts. En fait, euh, mon parcours, c'est que je suis euh, principalement dans la fonction publique fédérale en ce moment et je suis euh, en fin de maîtrise. Alors, euh, mon approche de présentation est un peu académique. Euh, je suis née et grandi à Côte-des-Neiges et j'ai toujours vu des impresses quand j'ai passé devant toute ma jeunesse, je voulais toujours y aller à l'intérieur, explorer l'endroit, mais c'était toujours fermé. So, who am I? So, I am actually a public servant and also a master's degree student uh, specialized in political science. I have no background in arts, 
sadly, but I would like to present an idea that I've been always interested that could maybe reflect inside the Empress. And uh, I've grew, I'm born and raised in Coutinage, but I've been in Notre Dame de Grasse as much as in Coutinage. And I've always seen this building and I always wanted to explore it, but never had the chance because it was always closed. So next slide. And so, uh, avant la présentation, j'ai demandé à savoir si quelques points qui seraient demandés de voir. Et voici les questions que notre cher urbaniste, qui a beaucoup d'expérience à côté neige m'a présenté. Uh, so, before during the presentation, I was, I was asking our urban planner to present different ideas, um, the different elements that he would like that I overview. So, these are the following questions. Uh, Comment rencontrer le projet de The Empress? How to come together the Empress project? What do I meant by art gallery? Je vais en développer plus tard. Qu'est-ce que je voulais dire par une galerie numérique? Et euh, qu'est-ce qui rend le bâtiment? Est-ce que ça rend le bâtiment des yeux? Is it the building becoming obsolete? And so next slide. And so the historic and context. So let's overview what's going on. C'est correct. Continuer à changer la page. Alors, je veux qu'on qu je sais qu'on l'a développé pendant les trois derniers jours et les autres présentations auparavant par les équipes de consultation auparavant, mais je veux juste qu'on y aille un peu plus brièvement à la situation. I know we've been through this before, but I just want to go overview quickly what the Empress was, the history. Alors, it was designed by uh, Joseph Alcide de Chaussé. He was the architect and Emmanuel Brif was the entire designer. Interior designer, le designer des terres, où ce qu'ils ont fait le développement de, du décor thématique égyptien qui serait tant à l'extérieur qu'à l'intérieur du bâtiment. Et ça avait commencé par les performances de vaudeville, par la suite cabaret, been going through cabaret, dinner theaters. Oh, sorry, I've made a couple of typo mistakes. I'm sorry. Royal Follies, les Royal Follies, cinéma. Et après ça, par la suite, une fermeture. Engendré par un incendie. So the closure of the place has started in 1992. Next slide. <coughs> so this is a couple of posters that were presented. C'est une couple d'affiches qui a été présentée historiquement à The Empress. Et on peut voir qu'il y avait d'autres cinémas comme Snowden, Outremont, Seville, Corona, Papineau, et ainsi de suite. So we can see that the history of the past has been present throughout different cinemas that we either we saw them transform or they've been long gone. On peut continuer. Et le contexte. Alors, le contexte qu'on doit considérer avant que je présente un projet ou qu'on considère à présenter le projet, c'est les difficultés qu'on peut voir du bâtiment. Alors, comme on voit en 1999, il a été acheté. 1999, it has been purchased by the city. 2005, there was an organization that wanted to bring the restoration of the place. Il y avait un organisme qui voulait faire de la restauration de l'endroit. Ils ont ouvert un local, ils ont ouvert un office. And then in 2009, and then later on in 2011, it got closed because the building was unstable. Le bâtiment était instable en 2011, alors ils ont décidé de fermer le bureau. And in 2009, there was a project with three tri parties to develop a restoration project. And other elements didn't go through. Il y a eu d'autres développements en 2009, ça n'a pas avancé plus. En 2012, il y avait une OBML qui voulait développer un cinéma. La ville a refusé de faire un financement. Les raisons, je ne sais pas malheureusement. Je fais juste un bref survol à la situation. So there was a non-profit organization that wanted to develop a cinema and there was no funding that can be given by the city. On continue. Et en 2013, Là, ça a commencé le vandalisme, les coupures de chauffage, la détérioration des lieux qui étaient encore plus euh, aggravés. So, 2013, vandalism, cease of heating, deterioration, sorry. And uh, 2017, there was an, another attempt with the private and public funding to bring back a cinema, and it didn't go through. It went on the news, and it was... Sadly, for I think the structures of the place that was not stable. Il y avait encore une tentative de financement public-privé, mais ça n'a pas avancé plus. En 2020, on, on sait que la ville a, a eu uh, 
un montant d'argent d'investir pour faire de la recherche sur l'inspection du bâtiment, savoir si l'infrastructure elle est viable ou non pour développer quoi que ce soit. La seule chose, c'est qu'on n'a pas encore ces informations-là délivrées au public. Alors, seulement la ville, si elle le sait, je pense que notre urbanisme le sait plus que nous. Euh, et il y avait eu des rumeurs de démolition venant de la ville. Et maintenant, on a des consultations publiques pour des projets développés à l'endroit. So, in 2020, the city has had invested money to, to do an audit on the building to see how stable or unstable the building is and how viable it is. There was demolition rumors from the city announcements, but those are rumors. And there was a public consultation that we are going through right now. In 2021, this is an element that I'm highly questioning because what can we do, especially with the state, as you can see, of the city, of the building, not the city, the building. Uh, la question c'est à savoir comment ça peut être viable en regardant l'infrastructure du bâtiment à l'intérieur. Next slide. Mais je vais quand même présenter mon projet parce que je veux que The Empress revive. À une nouvelle vie et ça serait une approche numérique d'art. Qu'est-ce qu'elle peut devenir? C'est quelque chose de plus innovatrice. On peut continuer avec le prochain slide. Alors, avant tout, qu'est-ce que l'art numérique? C'est un élément qu'il faut définir avant que je fasse mon proje projection d'idées. Alors, c'est l'art numérique, ça projette et induit de nombreuses innovations et pays. Euh, ça qui remet en question les rapports et rôles traditionnels du monde de l'art. So, digital art is something that I wanted to define before I present my project idea. And it's mostly technology that induces many innovations and creates and bring digital creations that brings questions to the traditional relationships and roles of the art world. Prochaine slide. Alors, pour ce faire, j'ai considéré que je voudrais développer une idée où c'est de l'art interactif et immersif. Il y en a d'autres types d'art dans l'art digital, mais ça, c'est mes sous-idées sous, euh, que j'aimerais qu'on développe euh, auprès du Empress. Alors, l'art interactif, c'est qu'on cherche à avoir le spectateur à ne pas être passif, mais participer dans l'exploration de l'œuvre d'art faite par un artiste. Uh, so interactive art is something that is considered not that a spectator is passive, but needs to participate into the art and the mind of the artist. Uh, L'art immersif, c'est encore plus loin. C'est où est-ce qu'on va interpeller les gens à sens avoir toute une expérience émotionnelle, sensorielle et corporelle, tout en s'émergeant complètement dans une sensation de réel, mais pourtant virtuelle, et de vivre le experience creative de l'intérieur. So immersive art is the experience and emotional sensory and physical at the same time where you immerse yourself in the real and virtual dimensions and sensation, which brings the creative experience from life from within. Next slide. Alors, ces idées que vous verrez, je vais le reprojeter plus tard. C'est ce genre de monde que j'aimerais qu'on ex... qu vit possible dans... Euh, The Empress. Les deux photos qui sont en haut à gauche, c'est pour quelque chose d'autre que je vais vous expliquer plus tard. Alors, on voit qu'on s'immerge et qu'on se développe dans un monde que l'artiste crée. We can continue. So, what does it bring to us? Est-ce qu'il est, y a des plausibles ennuis qu'on peut avoir par rapport à ce projet? Normalement, ça aurait dû être... Ah, désolé, c'est pas la bonne slide, mais c'est pas grave. Alors, on peut continuer. Alors, c'est bon. Alors, qu'est-ce qui pourrait être avantageux, c'est qu'en ce moment, à Montréal, on a plusieurs institutions, mais qui sont plus de spécialités euh, privées, qui sont plus d'approche du domaine privé, qui développent ce genre de développement spécialisé d'interaction et d'immersion de art numérique. À Mont oui, la ville de Montréal a beaucoup de maisons culturelles, a beaucoup de galeries d'art, mais on n'a pas juste un centre spécialisé dans ce domaine seulement. 
Et ça serait intéressant que ça soit juste un lieu où qu'on pourrait être les spécialistes et qu'on pourrait attirer l'attention et devenir un hub pour attirer l'attention de l'extérieur, pour venir visiter le quartier NVG Côte-Neige et découvrir qu'il y a quelque chose au-delà que juste passer le travers, comme je le faisais beaucoup quand j'étais jeune. So, what I'm saying in French is that uh, the immersive arts is very well known throughout the private sector, the pri very known private institution that are specialized in this immersive and interactive art. Yes, the city of Montreal has through the House of Maison de la Culture, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say in English, uh, the term. They do have those kind of arts, but it's mostly mixed galleries, it's mixed elements. And I would like to project that the Empress becomes a specialized and a hub just for that type of art. That would be very innovative and very interesting. And that can make NDG be put on the map and more uh, appealing to the area than other than just going through, especially on Sherbrooke Street, that is more of a hub street than any of a <laughs> passage. I'm very mean, I know, I'm sorry. I don't want to ruin NDG. It just, I don't quite honestly know NDG that very well. I very know Côte de Neige mostly. And so, sorry, revenons nos moutons. So the three institutions that are very well known throughout the city is the Arsenal Contemporary, which was known for a couple of years ago for the Imagine Van Gogh. And currently, or recently, there was Rafael Lozano and Mer Zerkania. And there's also the institution Société des Arts Technologiques, where they're known to have this met meta lab and the stratosphere that is like a dome and they have the old projections inside. Il y a aussi le Centre Phi, the Phi Center, which is known to do a lot of productions and they're very specialized in immersive arts. Carne y Arena by Alejandro Iñárritu is Sabrina Rati, Vivre dans l'ambiance l'ambiguïté et la contrariété. So these are the different projects that are recently being done or projected at these uh, centers that are from the private sector. We can continue. And so these are the centers that are all known. So the far up left is the Van Gogh, so the Arsenal. Up, up right, c'est le, le Stat. Up or down is the Kerni Kerni that is not yet projected at the Centre Fi, which is coming up. Uh, no, not Kerni Kerni, another one. And then so and so far. Okay, thank you for changing. It's okay. Go on. Okay. So, Lisa. Vous êtes à peu près à 15 minutes, hein, juste pour vous dire. Je sais, je m'excuse. Okay. Uh, les Il n'y a pas de problème. <laughs> Alors, uh, oubliez pas, là, je le fais en français, en anglais. Okay. So, uh, what good does it bring us? What are the obstacles that we have to that we're meeting with this project? Why am I saying this? Because we have to be realistic and pragmatic. Next slide. We're almost done, by the way. We're almost done. So the advantages of having la, this projection is that this, I mean, this project is that uh, it'll be a hub. Ça sera une plaque tournante en innovation auquel c'est pas défini en un seul endroit à Montréal dans le public. Euh, ça serait multifonctionnel, multifunctional, dans laquelle où ce que, comme vous avez vu, il y avait une des photos où ce qu'on voyait carrément, il y a du mobilier qu'on peut installer, qu'on peut enlever, on peut avoir des projections de films, on peut faire du théâtre et de la danse, tout en projetant par en arrière un décor, au lieu d'avoir des décors qui vont se déplacer euh, à travers le avec toute l'implication de développer des décors, mais ça serait déjà projeté. On pourrait faire des activités de loisirs, comme du yoga, de la méditation, tout et ainsi de suite. Alors, ce que je, pro je promouvois, c'est avoir des murs blancs, white wall canvases, qui peut permettre qu'on peut développer de multiples idées. So the idea is that the multifunctional is that we can have as much activities without having the uh, complicated logistics of creating decors and so on and so forth because I'm protecting, we can do theater, dance, and art, interactive arts, and so on and so forth. So 
That brings us to the environment, which will be cost less cost effective for bringing up or to waste. Uh, ça va coûter moins coûter d'argent euh, sur le long terme et aussi euh, il n'y aura pas de logistique ou de gaspillage de tout ce qui peut être lié avec une galerie temporaire. So it would less waste for for everything that is related to the temporary galleries. Mobility, on peut avoir euh, facilement du mobilier qui peut se déplacer comme des chaises, euh, un peu de meubles pour, euh, qui pourraient se déplacer dans la salle ou qui peut être ressorti facilement. Il n'y a rien de fixe ou de permanent sur le sol. So mobility to move things around easily with like simple furniture, chairs and so on and so forth, but that is not permanently fixed. And also uh, this idea, if it cannot be projected in the Ampress, it can be used elsewhere in another room. So this idea of mobility can be transferred elsewhere. That can be considered innovation, innovation. And we should consider that it should become a place of source of revenue. But that should not be imposed on the locals that are not financially able to spend money on different activities because Côte d'Amérique and DG is very immigrant and it has diverse uh, family revenues and not everybody can afford to pay to go to those activities. So let's try to aim for activities that can be fairly cost effective for the residents and maybe charge a little bit more for the people from the exterior. Alors, je veux qu'un endroit devienne une place de source de revenus, mais que ça ne soit pas euh, un revenu imposable. C'est pas un revenu imposable, pardon. Que ça ne soit pas quelque chose qui coûterait de l'argent aux personnes, les résidents de l'endroit. Parce que ce n'est pas tout le monde qui peut se payer des activités euh, parascolaires ou multiculturelles, ainsi de suite. Aussi, euh, espérer qu'il y ait une participation communautaire, uh, community implication, where everybody can have different activities inside this place that it cannot be just limited on specific international local artists, but also different ethnies, communities, intergenerational uh, activities, and so on and so forth. So to have a very blank canvas of what we can do of the place. Alors, on peut aller à l'autre slide. Merci. Alors, this is an image of what I'm projecting. So the yoga that can be done, the theater, the dance, the and the little, mobility, the little chairs that can be moved, so on and so forth. Next slide. So the constraint. So we're almost done. I'm sorry. I know it's almost 20 minutes. So the constraint is the infrastructure in the term of how to set up all this technology to do this art. I am not an expert in this. I could try to work and continue on to see how it can be preceded, how it can be implemented, uh, impliqué. Euh, L'infrastructure, je ne connais pas très bien comment ça peut être installé, ainsi de suite. Les coûts engendrés par rapport à ça, je, malheureusement, je ne le connais pas. Mais au moins, ça pourrait être quelque chose qu'il ne faut pas oublier. Aussitôt que l'infrastructure est installée, après ça, il n'y a plus d'autres coûts. Sauf so, okay, pour la maintenance. Uh, stabilité des lieux. The stability of the building. Why am I saying this? We have no clear image of how is the building stable. Can we have this? this kind of activities going on inside the building or the roof is going to collapse on us. That is something that the city has not shared to the public yet, and that would be quite interesting to know further on. Uh, la stabilité des lieux, si on ne sait pas si c'est si stable ou non, et c'est viable de rentrer et de partir à l'intérieur. Uh, aussi, pour s'en suivre à cette idée, la vision de la ville, the city vision, we do not clearly know exactly the vision of the city. Yes, we know they want to develop a project, but the long term is it viable? That's my question. Like we see in the context throughout the history, it was on and off, on and off, on and off. So that's something we have to consider. And also, I'm just throwing this big idea. I'm not sure if it's going to be a guarantee. Can this building be protected by becoming a heritage? Est-ce que une nomination de bâtiment patrimonial serait plausible à ce bâtiment qui pourrait avoir plus de financement ou des limitations pour pas que l'endroit soit euh, démoli à un certain pourcentage parce qu'on ne connaît pas la stabilité du bâtiment et on ne sait pas si c'est viable. Et aussi, je m'excuse, de l'autre slide, à mon autre je pense que c'est fini.
Next slide. Parfait. So again, the state of the building. Next slide. So this is how I would like to end. Stories have to be told or they die. And when they die, we can't remember who we are or why we're here. Alors, l'important, ce que je veux, c'est que oui, on a, on a un beau bâtiment. Il faudrait, ça serait bien de ne pas la démolir parce qu'on voudrait garder, voir son histoire, voir son passé pour qu'on puisse continuer à la partager pour le futur. Et c'est pas mal tout. Vous pouvez aller au dernier slide s'il y a des questions, ainsi de suite. Merci beaucoup. Euh, vous savez, euh, la, la présentation, ceux qui veulent la revoir aussi, les images, elle sera euh, sur, euh, sur le euh, rendu euh, disponible sur le site euh, la semaine prochaine. Alors, maybe we have uh, time for only one question because the time is, uh, is running out. We, yeah, and we have uh, one the last presentation that we definitely want, want you to, uh, to have to see. Est-ce que ça va? Pas de question. Bon. Non, mais ben, peut-être que les gens auront des questions à travers la présentation qu'on mettra, qu'on rendra disponible. Il y avait quand même beaucoup de matériel. Euh, mm -hmm. On peut faire peut-être, Maxime, notre petit, notre court sondage, s'il vous plaît, euh, pour passer ensuite de ça à Mme euh, Risk. Euh, et la dernière présentation pour essayer de rentrer dans notre temps le plus possible. Merci beaucoup. Donc, vous pouvez euh, faire un petit... Il reste encore quelques personnes. Excellent. Je pense que nous avons tous nos, nos gens. Ouais, voilà, voilà. Merci infiniment. Donc, euh, Madame euh, Risk, on vous passe la parole. Euh... Merci de votre patience. Bonjour. Hi, everybody. I'm really happy, uh, really happy to be here. Lots of uh, great ideas, lots of great projects. Um, you'll see that our project will uh, differ a little bit, our presentation will differ a little bit from uh, everyone else's because we're actually um, presenting sort of a vision of what to do with the impressed um, the theater rather than a project that could be housed in the project in the uh, in the building. Uh, my presentation will be in French. I hopefully it'll be um, understandable for everybody. Maybe I'll try to switch between English and French. We'll see how it goes. Um, so um, I'm my name is Amani Risk. I'm uh, here with my associate Sophie Le Bon. We're part of uh, Le Bon Risk Architecture and. We're both NDG residents, and um, we've uh, we've uh, sort of developed a vision um, surrounding the Impress Theater um, long before the consultations started, about two three years ago. And uh, we've been slowly developing this project, and we're happy to present it to uh, everybody today. Um, we could go to the uh, to the next slide. Um, so. Um, le, le théâtre Impress occupe une place vraiment centrale euh, d'un point de vue historique parce que euh, d'un point de vue historique architectural c'est vraiment un des premiers théâtres qui a été euh, comme ça ouvert à Montréal d'un point de vue urbanistique on va voir tout à l'heure la, la localisation euh, la, 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 son implantation stratégique dans le quartier mais aussi d'un point de vue émotif il y a tous ceux qui ont vécu euh, les grands jours du théâtre, ceux qui l'ont connu comme euh, salle de cinéma et d'autres qui, comme moi, l'ont que vu dans son état d'abandon. Mais même comme ça, abandonné, vacant, après des décennies, il, est encore, euh, il continue encore d'enflammer les passions puis d'habiter l'imaginaire collectif, on peut le voir euh, ce soir. Donc, on disait sa position dans le quartier est vraiment stratégiquement implantée à l'entrée du quartier euh, NDG, sur une artère commerciale en face d'un magnifique parc. Euh, et, et le théâtre, malgré ça, avec son extraordinaire façade néo-égyptienne, semble complètement en, en retrait par rapport à l'action urbaine et ne semble plus du tout participer à la vie de quartier. Pourtant, c'est un ensemble architectural qui est vraiment unique en son genre et euh, qui, qui doit maintenant s'ouvrir... Euh, vers le tissu urbain et laisser rentrer la vie euh, communautaire, dynamique qui s'est développée autour de lui et d'être de nouveau pertinent dans le quartier. Euh, on peut passer à la, à la prochaine euh, slide. Euh, 
Donc ici, on voit un petit peu qu'on a développé le projet sous trois euh, volets. Euh, donc, euh, même avant qu que toutes ces discussions sur ces, ces volets-là euh, se, se, sont, sont arrivées, euh, euh, sont arrivés aux, aux nouvelles, on se disait qu'il fallait qu'il y ait un volet habitation, un volet public et communautaire et un volet commercial. Donc en rouge, le volet commercial, bleu, le volet euh, habitation, puis en mauve, le volet public et communautaire. Puis ces trois volets-là, donc ce projet qui est développé sous trois angles distincts, tissent des liens absolument essentiels entre eux. Okay? Donc c'est vraiment un jeu de vase communicant où ces trois, l'habitation, le communautaire, le public et le commercial, se mélangent euh, pour créer un lieu qui soit hautement magnétique. Donc on parle de logement social, des ateliers d'artistes, des habitations familiales pour les personnes euh, aînées, euh, des espaces communautaires, de la création artistique, la création culinaire, des salles d'exposition, un CPE, on a une serre, on, on a pensé à une serre urbaine. Qui, euh, sur le toit, des ateliers de jardinage. Donc, on peut s'imaginer un groupe de CPE qui peut aller euh, utiliser les, les, le jardinage urbain sur le toit euh, et plus tard aller euh, voir un spectacle artistique euh, dans un des, euh, des autres locaux, interagir avec les résidents, les artistes, etc. Euh, on peut passer à la, à la prochaine slide. Donc ici, on voit un petit peu comment on a développé le, le, le concept. On est passé sur la, on a, on a travaillé sur la métaphore du théâtre. Donc on commence avec la, la façade du bâtiment qu'on veut conserver, pas pour faire du façadisme comme on voit beaucoup euh, dans la réhabilitation des projets euh, dernièrement, mais vraiment pour prendre cette façade et créer un cadre de scène pour la vie communautaire qui va être révélée à l'arrière euh, dans le bâtiment. Et cette façade devient donc un élément euh, sculptural euh, qui va pouvoir structurer toutes les interventions euh, qui, vont, euh, qui vont découler par la suite. La deuxième intervention qu'on fait, c'est une cour intérieure. Une cour intérieure qui est perméable à la trame urbaine, dans laquelle toute l'ambiance du quartier va pouvoir euh, venir se glisser. Euh, et c'est grâce à ce geste fort que le théâtre va perdre son caractère élitiste, réservé, replié sur lui-même et permettre une nouvelle appropriation du, du lieu. Donc, on va pouvoir enfin vivre ce bâtiment-là qui est un incontournable. Au lieu de le vivre par l'extérieur, de ne pas pouvoir y pénétrer, là, à ce moment-là, on va vraiment pouvoir euh, aller à l'intérieur. Et ce que ça fait aussi en créant cette cour intérieure-là, c'est que ça nous permet d'avoir beaucoup plus d'espace, de, euh, des locaux, des, la, des habitations qui ont euh, accès à la lumière. Euh, et donc, on découvre enfin le cœur de l'ancien théâtre, euh, son lieu de rencontre, sa scène, et on en fait une place centrale qui est maintenant citoyenne et communautaire. Euh, et en plus, par un traitement, un savant traitement au sol de la rue, on crée un lien fort vers le parc pour ouvrir euh, le cœur du bâtiment vers celui-ci et prolonger la vie de quartier dans ce grand espace euh, vert. Euh, rapidement, avant de passer aux, aux images, on crée aussi un rez-de-chaussée euh, commercial. Euh, euh, ça c'est donc dans la petite image 3 avec le rez-de-chaussée en rouge. Um, we also... Um, uh, propose um, uh, um, un volume uh, de logement qui serait en retrait un peu plus haut. Donc, on garde le gabarit, la taille, la forme uh, du building. Uh, on propose du logement uh, qui peut être aussi social uh, et communautaire et uh, des espaces locaux, uh, publics et communautaires avec ce qu'on disait tout à l'heure, une serre sur le toit. Donc, on s'est posé comme question, qu'est-ce que nous lègue ce bâtiment la, la réponse qu'on a eue, c'est que ce bâtiment nous lègue un héritage, le, un héritage d'un lieu communautaire qui est rassembleur et qui fait vivre un quartier. Donc, si on passe aux prochaines images, donc euh, voici ce qu'on propose. Euh, donc, on peut voir euh, en retrait à l'arrière le bâtiment euh, qui est un petit peu plus haut, le module qui est un petit peu plus haut dans lequel il pourrait y avoir du, euh, du logement. Euh, le bâtiment qui est sur... Euh, la rue, euh, l'aile qui serait sur la rue Oxford, elle euh, comporterait du logement euh, plus communautaire ou social. De l'autre côté, euh, on aurait la serre 
en toiture, les jardins communautaires et tous les locaux communautaires. Donc, vous voyez, tout d'un coup, on vient doubler les, la possibilité de locaux en ayant créé cette cour intérieure-là parce qu'on vient ouvrir complètement euh, le cœur et donner accès à la, à la lumière. Et tout ce cœur qu'on vient creuser et qui passe à travers ce cadre de scène-là, ce... Euh, se, se, se prolonge et se continue à travers euh, la rue jusqu'au parc. Donc là, on a animé un petit peu notre image. On peut peut-être passer à la prochaine. Euh, donc là, on voit un petit peu de plus, de plus proche la vie euh, vraiment communautaire, dynamique, qui peut euh, se, se dérouler dans, dans ce, ce bâtiment-là. Donc, qui devient vraiment un pôle dans lequel, on disait tout à l'heure, la trame urbaine. Donc, tous les commerces se continuent et se prolongent vraiment vers l'intérieur pour faire revivre cette, cette, ce, ce bâtiment-là qui est tellement bien positionné euh, et qui, qui est un bâtiment... Euh, extraordinaire, exceptionnel par sa forme, par sa taille, par sa présence. Euh, et donc, on, on, on garde tous ces éléments-là et on le, fait vraiment, euh, on le fait vraiment revivre. Si on va à la prochaine, we can see the link with the park. So we decided to animate it a little bit with um, uh, an urban market. Um, so uh, the, the, the um, animation that goes into the courtyard sort of flows all the way to the park to really make use of that uh, location. If we go to the next slide. So this is a front view of the building. So as you can see, we're keeping the, um, the, the original, uh, la volumetrie original of the building. Uh, we can see through uh, the building through these, this, um, ce cadre de scène, as we were talking about, cette structure, la façade qui devient comme une sculpture um, à travers laquelle on peut, on peut voir l'intérieur du bâtiment. On voit légèrement en retrait, uh, à l'arrière, uh, le, le bâtiment qui serait plus um, uh, résidentiel. À gauche, d'autres résidences. À droite, les espaces, um, les espaces uh, communautaires et publics. Et au rez-de-chaussée, tous les espaces uh, commerciaux. Euh, si on va au, à la prochaine slide, donc on voit d'un petit peu plus proche, on essaie de se, se rapprocher avec une cour vraiment qui serait, euh, qui serait animée. Donc tous les locaux, que ce soit aux étages ou au rez-de-chaussée, ont vu vers cette cour intérieure euh, pour encore une fois doubler l'espace puis vraiment le rendre viable. Euh, on s'entend que probablement la structure, l'idée derrière tout ça aussi, c'était que la structure du bâtiment est peut-être très peu euh, salvageable. Euh, et donc... Euh, on s'est dit qu'on va profiter de, de ça un peu et de, de révéler l'intérieur euh, du bâtiment et d'augmenter de, de, euh, la possibilité d'avoir des locaux euh, qui, ont de la, qui ont de la lumière. Si on va à l'autre euh, slide, donc ça c'est une vue un peu à vol d'oiseau où on peut voir la serre urbaine, les jardins communautaires et comment on a essayé d'animer un petit peu la cour à l'intérieur avec euh, des espaces verts. Euh, ce, 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 ce traitement du sol qui se prolonge vers l'intérieur de la cour. Euh, et si on va à la dernière qui reprend la première image, euh, donc, euh, donc voilà, c'est un petit peu ce qu'on a essayé de, de présenter, euh, euh, en, en, notre vision de la, euh, du théâtre Impress, du, euh, du Heritage Impress, tout ça dans les dix minutes <rire> Merci infiniment. Oui, très bien. Euh, vous aussi, je pourrais probablement vous mettre une, la note parfaite comme M. Bandeau tout à l'heure. Merci infiniment euh, de, de cette vision-là aussi. Euh, on voit des regards aussi projetés par des gens qui sont, euh, qui sont un peu... Euh, euh, en fait, qui ont une expérience différente euh, de, 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 de l'impresse. Qu'est-ce que ça peut donner comme regard? Alors, c'est intéressant. M. McQueen a une question pour vous. Donc, euh, oui, euh, merci beaucoup pour cette présentation, euh, Madame risque le bonne Très intéressant. C'est certainement le plus avancé comme, euh, comme dessin architectural que j'ai vu. Très intéressant. Je, je dois penser encore plus. Je vais aller re regarder la bâtisse pour voir si vos proportions euh, sont bonnes ou s'il pourrait être changé un petit peu pour avoir un peu plus d'espace pour vivre. Mais c'est certain que cette idée de la... The, the interior courtyard, ça règle des idées parce qu'il n'y a pas tellement de fenêtres sur la façade. Alors, c'est clairement un problème, comment rentrer la lumière. Alors, vous avez quand même, euh, euh, c'est une façon de régler ce problème. Alors, oui, merci beaucoup. Très, très intéressant. Merci. Merci infiniment. Est-ce que nous avons, euh, oui, Madame Leslie. Merci d'être restée, Madame Leslie. Oui, non, mais merci. Euh, je, 
j'ai juste réorganisé. Um, merci beaucoup. Uh, C'est une, um, une vision très intéressante et uh, um, I liked how you made creative use of the existing space. And honestly, I, I was it's been for years that the only salvageable part of the building, and even that is questionable now probably, is the facade. So, I mean, that's it, that's all. So it will be being built from the ground up. Anyway, it was just, uh, I, I really, really appreciated the new, new perspective. Um, it does incorporate a good number of the elements from uh, the, Empress Cultural Center project that was very extensively developed and designed. Um, my question to you was, you mentioned the housing. Um, I was interested in whether you had done any analysis of the nature of the housing. Um, so what we thought of was, and it's, it's funny you had you initially mentioned um, Benny Farm. From that comp from uh, the Empress Theater, but we were sort of thinking of a model You're very well. that where you would have, um, where you would have. Um, we don't hear you very well. No. No. Can you hear me now? Il y a quelque chose qui est arrivé. I didn't change anything. I don't know. Can you hear me? Loin. Vous êtes loin. You can't talk loud enough. Speak more loudly. I don't know what changed. Can you hear me now? No, not, not very loudly. Uh, I think Peter's suggestion is a good one. Talk as if you were talking to a big room. I'm talking super loudly, I'm almost yelling. But um, I, was, I was mentioning uh, that, uh, yeah, you mentioned the Benny Farm. And when we developed this project, we were sort of thinking of a similar model where you would have condos, but you, will all, you would also have social housing, um, uh, more low income housing. So it, uh, th this project is all about mixing, uh, you know, the community, mm. mixing, uh, maybe there could be also some offices, higher rent offices that would bring, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. money mm -hmm. to, the, uh, to the infrastructure. So there's, there's a lot of ideas that were also presented today or the days before that could be integrated in a project uh, like that. C'est à moi, c'est à moi à reprendre le fil un peu. On essaie de finaliser euh, la rencontre. Écoutez, il est déjà tard. On voulait quand même finir avec euh, cette vision-là un peu parce que parmi les prochaines étapes, c'est l'idée d'avoir donc des architectes qui essaient de traduire la différente vision qu'on a dans des plans. Il y a une vision qui a été présentée ici, mais ça sera quelque chose comme ça qu'on aura l'occasion de travailler ensemble, un projet plus avancé. Alors, euh, voilà. On voulait quand même avoir deux petites étapes avant de vous quitter. Ah, Camille Bédard a une, peut-être une question. La dernière, avant de passer à de finaliser les, les derniers petits sondages. Oui, bonsoir. Euh, euh, merci euh, pour la présentation. Euh, J'avais, il ben, y a, y a un, un point dans votre présentation qui m'a quand même surprise parce que vous avez parlé de, dans le programme, puis le programme, tu sais, dans, dans l'aspect multifonctionnel et... et est très intéressant, mais vous avez parlé de briser le caractère euh, élitiste du lieu, euh, mais l'Empress en soi ou le Royal Follies ou Cinéma 5 n'ont jamais vraiment été des lieux élitistes parce que des, euh, le, le cinéma à l'époque était très, très accessible. Euh, cinéma 5, c'était un cinéma de répertoire où euh, les gens y allaient pour euh, presque rien. Donc, ça m'a quand même surpris dans votre, euh, votre euh, présentation. Je ne sais pas si vous pouvez... Euh, euh, élaborer un peu là-dessus. Oui, en fait, c'est tout simple. C'est l'idée de ne plus avoir besoin euh, d'acheter un billet pour pouvoir entrer. Euh, c'est plus, c'est de ne plus avoir à attendre pour rentrer. Ce n'est plus, euh, c'est de ne plus avoir besoin d'avoir une raison pour aller au théâtre euh, Impress, pour aller dans le Heritage Impress. On y va parce qu'on marche dans la rue et tout d'un coup, on est happé par cette cour intérieure magnifique. On rentre dedans, euh, on rencontre quelqu'un, on s'assoit sur un banc. Peut-être qu'on dépense l'argent pour prendre un café. Peut-être on monte voir la serre, voir comment, qu'est-ce qui se passe. Mais on n'a plus besoin d'avoir euh, une, une raison pour y aller. C'était un peu ça le caractère élitiste dont on voulait parler. Puis souvent, le théâtre, 
euh, est associé avec ça, bien que, comme vous l'avez bien dit, ce n'était pas forcément le cas. Euh, donc, c'était un petit peu ce, euh, cet, cet aspect-là qu'on voulait, euh, qu voulait préciser. C'est tout. tout. Tout est en nuance. Mr. Brooke uh, Struck, you have a question. And after, uh, keeping you, Mr. Bond, yeah, the last uh, question. Sorry. Uh, please forgive me for asking a boring procedural question. But um, in addition to um, the presentations and the votes that we've made uh, throughout the evening, um, you know, a lot of the discussion that's happened after the presentations and kind of looking for ideas that are transversal and this type of thing. Um, what is the process for making sure that the conversation is captured and not just the presentations on the votes? Uh, we, we, everything is reg registered and every, we, we've been, been through the, the, three, the three nights, uh, at least for myself and, and Yolande and, and Jean-Francois. It's the kind of details also that we could also bring together to the, the, the council bureau for the next decision. It's nothing that we will probably have to listen back to also to your, your comments and everything. So uh, in the next months, because I think it's very, very interesting, much more. In fact, in, in certain way, don't want to mention that the presentation were not interested, but I think they generate a lot of discussion. So uh, I think the two of, of that, you know, it's only six hours of six hour and a half for, to, to, uh, to listen again, maybe in the next process. So I think this is something that we could definitely bring. Uh, this is something that we could definitely do and also impose that to the next uh, uh, the people that are going to work also maybe to ask them to ask, ask them to, you know, to listen to the conversation and, and, and see the presentation before doing anything and drawing anything else. I think it's, it's a, this is at least something that I, I could uh, suggest uh, more. It's not, and considering it's not the end of the process, it's a stepping stone. It's one of the steps on an on, in an ongoing process. We're building something together with all of these ideas, then that's where we're going. So it's not, uh, it's not mm -hmm. finished. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was more that um, you know the the um, SHDM, for instance. I I don't see anyone explicitly labeled as representing that organization, but my understanding is that they will play a pretty important role in these discussions moving forward. So I just want to make sure that our voices are heard with everybody who's going to be contributing to that process. Yeah, as I mentioned before, it's not because you don't see them that they are not, you know, we're hearing everything. And, you know, it, and it's something else also, it's, it's the client or, or the people that is making the request to the SHDM is the borough. So they will mm -hmm. probably work, the SHDM is, is going to work also with the, the mandate that the council borough will give them. This is something else that I had to mention also to, to remind you, because it's very, something very important. It's not the decision maker here. It's not, it's the borough. It's still the borough. It's going to be to stay the borough. So I think you also mm -hmm. had a comment on that, Mr. Bounder. For now on, it's, it's us who are, you know, giving uh, the direction of the project. So I think it's a good thing. You were, uh, it's not only me, it's the, 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 the uh, l'administration et le politique qui vont travailler là-dessus. Alors, uh, Mr. Bounder. In, in, in fact, the building belongs to the arrondissement or to the center city? It belongs to the central city. And we are just also in the process of trying to see who's, it's, it's managed by the, by the borough, but it belongs to the central city. But it's, we're all the city, you know, it, we don't make any difference between the borough and the, and the city, you know, it belongs to the city, so. Uh, uh, of course, and, and I think that the vision of the community is always uh, prioritaire in uh, city exactly. planning. Exactly. I, yeah. I'd like to congratulate La Bonne Risk Architecture. There's a beautiful, beautiful vision to it. My question is, um, do you believe uh, that uh, it is, uh, there is an ability to preserve the privacy and the quietude uh, and tranquility of a residence, which would be of all ages, in that building, uh, far from the maddening crowd? It's a really question, a good question. I think, I think definitely it is, it is possible. It would be, um, uh, you know, in terms of organizing when a certain uh, event can take place, if the residents are in this section of the building, uh, you know, how can we make sure that it doesn't bother um, them if there is, 
you know, a big public activity uh, going on on the other side. So I think it's all a question of being able to have a good management of that project. Definitely, you know, there needs to be an um, over some some organization that oversees everything needs to make sure that everything can uh, build together. But I think it's also uh, something that's very rich to be able to combine, you know, residential residential um, aspect with a more community aspect, with a more even commercial aspect. The idea of having everything so, you know, close uh, makes the space very dynamic, and then it could be. Um, it could be very beneficial for everybody. So in fact, prospective inhabitants are looking for what the building will offer. Definitely. Right. Great job. Thanks. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Monsieur Bandeux, pour vos commentaires très gentils. Euh, merci à la fin à tout le monde de présenter. Avant de vous laisser, je veux quand même qu'on permette aux gens de faire comme à, à, en fait à ce dernier projet-là, de, de pouvoir recevoir vos commentaires. Donc, on va mettre le petit sondage. It's still our time for a little survey. And just don't leave uh, right after the survey, please. We have on one last step that we want to go through. Maxime, tu as le dernier petit sondage. Voilà. Merci de faire votre vote. Dix-neuf, vingt-deux, Parfait. Merci infiniment. Euh, on nous a demandé aussi euh, à la dernière étape de faire, euh, de choisir. Ah, je... oh, Madame Leslie, vous aviez une question. Votre oui. Micro. Oui. Voilà. Ah, merci. Um, mais peut-être vous allez l'adresser, je ne sais pas, mais uh, it's to know what are the next steps. Um, people, and I, I congratulate you for these three evenings. Um, I think there's been a real richness of contribution and exchange. And so now lots of people are asking, so what's going to happen next? Like, what's the next yeah. step? <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a mandate that we have to give the, the SHDM to work with a, 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 a pre-project uh, with the guidance of the, the what you mentioned, what uh, the, the, these three nights came, came with with all the projects that were, that, that were presented also in, in, in December. With also, we have a, a report that is on the facade that was also made by uh, Evoque Architecture. So we have some elements that we want to give the SHDM to work with and develop a, a pre-project. It won't be uh, 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 as detailed as uh, Le Bon Risk uh, did, but it's going to be a, a, a certain project with some volume inside of it and, and a, a pre-programmation that we will also share with the, the community. I know it's not a lot of in, information, but you know what, in a certain way, I think it's a good thing because there is so much information. We, on, on marche, uh, on, on y vote par petits pas, sans trop savoir, mm -hmm. parce qu'il y a mm -hmm. tellement de... de, 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 mm -hmm. de, de, de C'est tellement riche comme discussion mm -hmm. qu'il faut des fois qu'on replace les choses Mm -hmm. Et même pour nous comme professionnels, c'est un casse-tête. Vous, vous avez compris qu'il y a plus de demandes à satisfaire qu'il y a d'espace, mm -hmm. à moins qu'on fasse, comme Mme Stringer a dit hier, de, de démolir les bâtiments voisins. Alors, c'est une réponse bête de fonctionnaire que je vous donne, mais c'est celle que je peux vous donner à ce stade. Alors, nous allons mm -hmm. nous représenter mm -hmm. devant le conseil d'arrondissement pour demander... Mm -hmm repréciser le mandat qu'on a donné l'année dernière, qui a été arrêté à cause de la COVID. Et ça devrait se faire euh, probablement en mars. Euh, ah, Peut-être okay. que là, tu veux... Oui. Ça, 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 c'est bientôt. C'est ce um, qu'on vise, guess exactement. Je pense que ce que je a desire that I know exists for many individuals and organizations is that when you are at the stage of preparing the pré-projet or whatever the mandate is that goes to SHDM, it would be wonderful if the community could be reconvened and have some interaction and exchange about your proposed mandate to SHDM. Um, anyway, that's just again expressing the desire to co-create this and to do it at every step along the way 
to not find out after the fact that the mandate given to SHJM, um, many organizations might have concerns about it, but to have an opportunity to have some say in what that is. Thank you. Je, je vous comprends très bien, puis j'entends très bien ce que vous voulez dire. Il y a une chose qu'on ne sait pas encore, c'est si le projet est réalisable, parce que vous savez, on n'a même pas fait d'analyse financière. Il faut se dire aux élus aussi combien ça va coûter tout ça. Et ça, c'est toujours la difficulté de voir qu'est-ce qu'on met en, en, en place. On va réfléchir avec nous. Il n'y a pas de décision de prix jusqu'à mm -hmm. maintenant. On vous entend. We'll get back to you. This mm -hmm. is something... OK, in a certain mm -hmm. way, this, we go, we're going to get back to you. Mm -hmm. Et vous savez, le, ceux qui prennent les décisions, et je le répète, c'est le, le conseil d'arrondissement qui mm -hmm. prend les décisions. Mm -hmm. et, et, et nous, on, les fonctionnaires, on leur suggère une façon de faire. Et, et eux, et c'est complexe. Mm -hmm. ouais. Mais, Mais merci je, beaucoup. Je, on on ouais, attend, je, je on attend pour, les, ouais, les prochaines depuis... interactions. Oui, <rire> ouais, voilà. Ça fait 20 ans que je suis à la ville de Montréal maintenant. Uh, je, uh, I think it's the most complex project that I ever seen. Uh, you probably already know that, but uh... merci. Donc, uh, on a fait un petit sondage avant de vous quitter. On n'a pas nécessairement de moyens de faire. On voulait, on nous a demandé, ce n'est rien de scientifique, de choisir les trois meilleurs projets qui sont présentés. Ceux qui ont été là tout le temps vont le pouvoir le savoir. Alors, Jean-François va présenter à l'écran. Malheureusement, Mme Bocard, on, va, on ne présente que les 12 parce que votre présentation est arrivée trop tard. Là. Alors, notez qu'il y a 12 projets qui sont présentés à l'écran. Il y en a un 13e qui est celui qui a été présenté par Mme Bocard. Et le cas échéant, si hey, vous hey, voulez, hey. donc... Yeah. Oui, Mme um, Leslie. Yes, I, I just have a procedural question. Um, yeah. This, for me, is coming totally out of the blue. Um, I, I find it, um, I'm uncomfortable about having to choose three top projects. I wasn't here for most of the first night, um, so I don't even have any way of having input in that. Um, I don't think people who were there last night or the night before knew that this was going to happen. So if it's going to have any, any weight at all, It's, it's bias in favor of just those of us who were here this evening. And so I, I okay, question bon, whether parfait, even doing that, that's, we were quite aware that this is a, this was something that we were told to do. Um, and we, we had announced it every, every night that we would be doing this at the end, but it's uh, not scientific okay, and okay. it doesn't have weight. It was uh, just to have sort of a sounding board, of, and, but we're very aware that not everybody was here for all of the presentations. So oui, unfortunately- je, je right. Is there an Exactement, opportunity, mais... is there a way to abstain? Yes. Yeah, okay, <laughs> so that's what I'll do because yes. I don't feel at all comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Um, Exactement. Si les gens veulent, écoutez, si vous des gens justement euh, veulent pas voter, puis mettez-le, puis on va, on va en tenir compte, on va dire euh, à qui de droit, voilà. Mm -hmm. Alors euh, ça c'est tout à fait possible de faire, mais mettez pas de réponse. Dites euh, et c'est dans le chat là, mettez soit vos choix ou soit le fait de dire je ne veux pas voter. Et euh, alors voilà pour nous ça va déjà être une très bonne indication. C'est une façon de de s'en sortir euh, avec Exactly. Demain. So you Donc, have euh, a choice. You can either pick your... If you had a chance to see all the presentations, like just say which one's your top three. Um, and if you don't want to, just say you're, you're not going to vote. Well, it's not a real vote. Yeah. It's not... A, it yeah, doesn't... Uh, exactly. going to win an election. <laughs> so... Yeah. Um, excuse me, there is... Yeah, go ahead. I, pardon me. There is a way to make it um, um, uh, anonymous, I suppose, as well. Uh, there is a way to do it. You can do it on Zoom. Everyone can change their names to the same name, and you won't know yeah. who voted for what. Très bien. Uh, mettez Empress. Empress. Changez vos noms. Mettez Empress. Puis uh, voilà. Uh... Where did uh, we do they... that? I've never done that before. <laughs> so, so, can, can there not just be a vote like one to nine or 12, like there was for the each individual and we just select the number? Oh, God. I think the best way is probably, yeah, yeah. You have to go uh, up in your little uh, the, the figure where you see oh, your yeah. name. 
there's a muen there's three points you, you can okay. yeah exactly okay you can see it's very democratic <laughs> merci de votre suggestion madame swim bienvenue It's possible that some of the people who are not changing their names, it's because they're they're still connected, but they're not actually at their computer. Oh, maybe. It's been known to happen. <laughs> One of the advantages and and peculiarities of zooming <laughs> i just yeah. realized i have my apron on because i went and made some food at one point <laughs> i don't usually go to meetings in my apron Sarah, j'ai deux réponses euh, présentement. So, are we doing it in the chat? Is that the way that it works? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You have to. Oh, put your, okay. Your I didn't understand that. Three, yeah, yeah. You could address it directly to Nicole, Nicolas Lavoie. Also, way. yeah, it exactly. doesn't appear so to easy. everyone. Yeah. Si ça peut aider la mémoire des gens, on peut rappeler que le 1, 2, 3, 4, c'est la soirée du mardi. 5, 6, 7, 8, la soirée du mercredi. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Pour Mme Bocard, c'est la soirée de ce soir jeudi. Juste as a reminder, the presentation is 1, 2, 3, 4, we're on Tuesday, 5, 6, 7, 8, on Wednesday, 9, 10, 11, 12, plus... Uh, the ex the Madame Bacar were tonight. Vous êtes très bon. J'en ai un du chez 14. Je ne sais plus combien vous êtes. Uh, or about six to seventeen. Euh, je vais juste prendre cette opportunité pour euh, remercier tout le monde. Je, je vais, vais m'en aller. Merci beaucoup, euh, je... Nicolas, Yolande, euh, toute l'équipe. Euh, vous faites un travail phénoménal et de longue haleine. Alors, euh, oui. Jean-François, euh, n'oubliez pas Jean-François. Jean-François, oui. Tournez les pages. C'est beau. Mal au doigt ce soir. Thank you to all the participants and especially all the presenters. Have a good evening, everybody. Merci beaucoup. Alors, c'est le temps de se laisser. Il est 9h05. Désolé d'avoir dépassé un petit peu notre temps. J'espère que vous avez apprécié. Et puis, euh, euh, je, je ne sais pas comment on dit en, en, en français, on dit « ce n'est qu'un au revoir ». Alors, ouais. euh... Ce n'est qu'un au revoir. <rire> we'll see each other again soon, actually. Yeah, exactly. The best way to put exactly. it. Thank you, you very much. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Haven't had your last bye, word. Bye, bye. <laughs>